Sleepovers have got to be the craziest functions on the planet. Ever since the JIT days, I've been begging my mom to stay at my friend's house for the night to sleep over. Like, I had to go on a crazy quest just to beg her to let me go over there and stay the night. Mom, please, sleep over, sleep over, sleep over. And once your parents were convinced, it was like you were on cloud nine. Getting this crazy dopamine boost, you were like jumping all over the place. And now when I ask my mom to have my friends over to sleep over, it's like I don't even gotta ask anymore. I don't know what happened, but hey, I'll take it. Now I'm sure all of you can remember your first sleepover like it was yesterday because that's how crazy of an event it was. How hyped up you were to be staying over your friend's house for the night. Now I arrived at my first sleepover and there were tons of people there. It was kind of like a merge between a sleepover and a party. And we did basically the normal party slash sleepover things like movies, video games, food, etc. And it was getting late. And I mean really late. I was in like second grade at the time. 12 a.m. was, it was late for me. Like my parents would make me go to bed at like 8 p.m. So this was like new territory for me. But thank God I wasn't the first person to fall asleep, man. You gotta stay strapped out here. Because as soon as the other kids found out that so-and-so, uh, you know, we'll give them a name, Ben. As soon as Ben fell asleep, we hit him with the water trick. Now, if you don't know what the water trick is, you basically just stick someone's hand in a bowl of water and they're supposed to piss themselves. Shh, guys, 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 guys. Someone go get a bowl of water. Ben's knocked out. Yo, I'm on it, bro. I'm on it. I was waiting for this moment. Bro, shut up. You're gonna wake him up. Tiptoe. A few minutes later. All right, I'm back with the water. And one hour later, there was piss in his pants. Okay, no, there wasn't. He was just mad. This taught me a great lesson not to fall asleep at the sleepovers first. As one of my friends, uh, he was the host too. He, he said like, this is why you never fall asleep first. All right, noted. And I noted that for the rest of my life. And of course, we continued to do our devious antics as other kids fell asleep. And then next, we, we did the mustache trick, which just draw a mustache on someone. And they wake up, look in the mirror. Oh my God, I got a fucking beard. Holy shit. It's like they went through 20 years of life in one sleep. I guess that's what the trick is. I don't know. And maybe they might find a Mickey Mouse logo on the side of their cheek too. Who even knows? But yeah, that was just tough beans for that kid, man. Like, hopefully we didn't use a permanent marker. As soon as we were done, bro woke up and he probably smelled the fucking Sharpie. So I wouldn't be surprised if we use permanent marker. Then the next sleepover I remember, it was in fifth grade. I was about to go to middle school. I was about to be a cool ass, guys. Oh my God. But no, let me tell you, I was, I was not a cool ass. It was like two in the morning. I had like baseball practice the next morning and somehow I thought it was a brilliant idea to sleep over but Yeah, guys, I definitely wouldn't be tired for practice. No, no, not at all And I gotta go to sleep and everyone was just still talking Everyone was still hyper as shit and instead of enjoying the, my time having a great time at the party or, and I said the worst thing you could possibly say at a sleepover guys Actually, I'm trying to sleep. Could you guys shut the fuck up? Okay, I didn't say it like that But I'm like guys, I'm trying to sleep and yeah, I don't know how I was still friends with this kid afterward but like if you were tired go home like it isn't that hard my past self was really dumb if you couldn't tell like i shouldn't have even slept over there if i was trying to sleep or whatever and everyone continued chatting whispering laughing etc because who's got who the hell's gonna listen to me bro? i was literally the walking nerd emoji in that moment in time i just killed the vibe every time i opened my mouth and sleepovers always had the the wildest conversations and i think i would have actually had fun if i partook in any of these but no i I had to be the fucking nerd emoji. I was literally that kid in the corner. While well, everyone was having a fun time staying up late. I guess I didn't get the memo that you're meant to stay up late at sleepovers. It would just get silent and the part that kept everyone up is some kid would just talk and then everyone would put their head up again. Penis. <laughs> hey guys, guys, can I get a hoya ratio, buddy? Shut your goofy ass up before I start hitting on your sister. Yo! That's a bro code violation. Guys, I'm trying to sleep. Can you guys shut up? No. And they went back to it, which, yeah, I definitely deserve that. That's like some idiot behavior, right? There. And as we progressed through middle school, I finally learned that, hey, sleepovers, you're supposed to stay up late, dumbass. And towards the end of high school, sleepovers really started to hit different. The jokes, the games, and the activities were just far superior. And somehow my parents didn't even care because they apparently the next morning they said they heard us marching up and down the stairs like a horde of elephants. I guess my parents let a lot more loose with what I can do with sleepovers over the years. 
because, well, I was allowed to be up with the boys at 4 a.m. for those late night thoughts, and those went crazy. Oh my, yo, if you really think about it, your future self's just gonna start talking shit about you one day, like your present self right now. Whoa. Yo, I never thought of it like that. That's crazy. So you see that spike ball net over there? Bro, if we cut holes in it, there would be less holes in the net, huh? Oh, I get it. <laughs> Look at Brandon over there. What a what a robot. Don't make me come over there and kiss you. Yo! Yeah, out of nowhere, I'd hear some sus shit, and yeah, you, you got the whole room jumping at four in the morning. And believe it or not, man, it, it, it doesn't stop here. It only gets better once we get to college. Skip to college, I was like a freshman, and I was hosting a party slash sleepover. I don't know if this was like the first big party I've hosted. And this party went crazy because, well, yeah, there was a certain drink that was introduced. You know, I really was messing with the apple juice, the bots, bro. Hey, I had to buy a lot. So yeah, we were so out of it that we almost got a noise complaint because because we went outside to play basketball at one in the morning. Like, yeah, that's a really smart idea. And we were all just being a bunch of loud idiots while we were just shooting the ball around, just laughing about whatever the hell we were talking about. Who knows, man, maybe someone, some angry Karen was on the phone with the police. I did have a Karen that used to live like down the street from me. It could have happened. But then I got a text from my mom saying, duck, get you and your dumbass friends back in here before we get a noise complaint. Of course, I gathered the, the herd and we went back inside because while well, I didn't want 12 pulling up tonight. So we we went back inside and the big guns were introduced and man I was starting to see stars if you catch my drift I had to have birdie like help me walk up the stairs because I was like fucking falling all over the place and all I remember is us just laughing like Beavis and Butthead at like 3 in the morning like <laughs> <laughs> like they looking back on it this shit was way too funny and then we went to play darts which wow what what great decision making no one was harmed in this game of darts we had like Lil Uzi blaring on the speaker at like 3 in the morning so we had that going in the background and then my friend bet me $20 that I wouldn't get over 50 points so I'm like all right challenge challenge accepted it. We got right to it and I just started locking in. And are you ready? First shot hit the goddamn wood. I hit the wood! Like, I'm choking badly. And everyone just starts hysterically <laughs> laughing, including me, because bro, it ain't looking good at this point. And then next shot, I hit a triple 19. And let's just say I won the bet. And he, my friend Venmo me 20 bucks. And that same friend that Venmo me 20 bucks made some goofy dancing video. And <laughs> I don't know, if, I don't know where this was put. Maybe it was on his story, but who even knows if it was posted. Then we finally went to bed. It was like 5 a.m. I'm not even joking. And then I just heard a bunch of snoring within like 10 minutes. And then I wake up the next morning with a severe headache. What the fuck happened? Love you, John. Wh which one of you fuckers wrote this? I don't even know. Now, one type of sleepover that I did not mention, because of course, I don't have the dog in me to do this, but pretend to be gay at the girl's sleepover. Now, if you've done this, you got some serious dog in you, bro. Holy fuck. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, watch that video right there on the end screen. You'll love it. I promise. Also, go follow the Spotify podcast. I started one up recently. Link in description. Bye. Okay, the title's a bit of an exaggeration. Just a bit. But as humans evolve, dating has become more difficult. With technology and social media slowly dividing us, I think it's safe to say that dating in 2023 or whatever year you're watching this has become more difficult. And here are the, some of the things that you'll see in Gen Z that's, that are just absolutely ridiculous. You want to avoid them at all costs. First up, we got people who care about your zodiac sign. And it's just super into it. Like, bro, why do you care that much? Like, does it matter to you that I'm a goddamn Leo or a whatever the hell it is, Sagittarius? Yeah, there are people on TikTok that deadass care about what time of the year you were born. And somehow that will affect my personality. Like, what the... F like, it just doesn't make any sense. Oh my god, he's a Gemini. Red flag. Or whatever the hell sign I am. Like, I can't help that I was born at the time I was. But yeah, if I ch I fucking stay in my mother's womb for another month, I guess that'll change my personality. So yeah, if you she cares about something so little as your zodiac sign, run. So we're gonna put this red flag in the run tier, which is the worst out of all of them. Then you got people who say anything is a red flag. I know, how ironic. And this is what made it makes dating so hard, bro. I guess you just have to be the perfect girlfriend slash boyfriend. We have to have everything in common or else it's just over. One time I found it, I found this quite funny I was out with a bunch of friends and there was this girl there and she asked what music I listened to and I said rap and she just said red flag huh
it how is that a red flag i don't know apparently i'm gonna be sipping that walkie because future told me to like i'm not that fucking stupid like jesus the music sounds good it gets me turned it gets me like a high level of energy so i'm gonna listen to it like i'm not gonna say your taste in music is a red flag because that's just something so minuscule like who cares if i'm like getting turned to playboy cardi in the whip yo do you guys mind if i get ox no not at all man go crazy the walkie be saving the day to give it a cake yeah we draw in a bang and I count a hundred K. Get free move with the pen. Let us pray. Hunt him up, up with a chop on spray. Damn, he's making it back into the trenches with that one. You know, low key it was kind of fire. He needs to keep that hidden talent hidden. Um, what was this? Oh Red god, flag. Bro. Oh my god, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. You like sipping wok? Uh, no, I never said I. Nah, but they make the craziest stretches of all time. But nah, you tripping if you think music taste is a red flag. Yeah, that, that's going in the you tripping tier. Or any like normal hobby like bowling or something. That's the you tripping tier. Next, we got someone who's looking for someone with a huge income. Like th their standards are insanely high because apparently they, they need to make like 400k a year or else they're just not valid. Like, bro, are you that spoiled? They're just getting with you for the money and not because of you. So obviously that, that's a huge red flag. You know, we're gonna go with the red flag tier. Then another thing that happens often in Gen Z is there's always people preaching men suck and there's always people preaching women suck. Like, holy. Like, just because you went through one crucial breakup with Bradley or whatever, that doesn't mean all men suck. And same goes for the vice versa. Like, I've been seeing all these girls on TikTok say all men suck and they don't need, we don't need men to survive and men are useless. Like, bro. Damn, bro. I'm scared for the future of this population. Bro, we're about to go extinct if people keep this shit up but yeah if someone says the opposite gender of theirs sucks well run run very very far away oh my god jessica men are so trash they suck i know girly you're so right uh yeah it, it was nice talking to you i'm gonna get going we be the bigger person and dip fucking run next we got heavy tiktok user or any heavy heavy social media user like six to eight hours a day i'm talking if they're just sitting there scrolling consuming content for that long chances are they don't like going out or when they are out they're like scrolling on tiktok to feed them dopamine instead of getting natural dopamine through social interaction so for this one we'll go with this concerning tier because that that is pretty concerning but not as concerning as wanting social media logins now some people do this and it's fucking insane like why do you want to see their text messages snapchats like this is like borderline stalker shit like the whole point of having a relationship is trust and if you don't even trust the person you're with to the point where you have to like log into their social media or check their messages what kind of relationship is it i don't know i'm gonna put this one in psycho tier because you gotta be like some fucking level of psycho to do that that is just crazy you gotta do more than just run for that then you got OF. Now, I'm not trying to be in those videos. Enough said. And I don't want Sims tugging Timmy to my girlfriend. That would just feel weird. Just what knowing the that they're doing it. Like, ugh. And then some Sims actually fly out to visit the girl. Uh, who are you? Um, hello. This is my buddy Nielsen. Um, hello. I'm Bartholomew. Nice to meet you, good sir. Now, where is the queen? Uh, my girlfriend? Uh, yes, we're here for the viewing party. There's a viewing party for what? Like, what exactly are you guys viewing? We're watching your girlfriend film her content. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to handle all that. That's what it would look like in real life if it was happening. Just thinking about that scenario just makes me uncomfortable. So we're gonna have to go with the avoid tier until she retires. Then maybe I'll consider. Next, we got starting drama over completely petty things. This is a terrible trait, bro. No one should be putting you under a microscope. Something I've noticed with these toxic Gen Z people is they'll just put you under a microscope and ridicule you for any a normal person wouldn't care about. Hey, Jessica, eat a salad, bitch. I'm gonna be the other room with my Bugatti watching Andrew Tate. I'm coming, my daddy Andrew. Okay, pause. But hey, these crazy instances happen. All right, I, this isn't exaggerated at all. Like, this happens in toxic relationships. And it makes dating so fucking difficult for no reason. Like, is it really that hard to just show some goddamn respect? If you start petty arguments or, or just toxic like that, you just create drama all the time, you're going in psycho tier. Next, we got cheating. Now, this one's really obvious. Never get back with someone who cheats. Most likely, they're never gonna change. So 
once a cheater, always a cheater. Unless they have some crazy ass turnaround that I don't know about. Avoid people who cheat, they're for the highway. And if they're cheating on you with other people, then they don't like you. So why even be with them? Do not let it slide. Pull the plug. It's going in, uh, well, we'll go run tier. Next, we got high body count. Now, this one's kind of similar. If we have, if you have an extremely high body count, if you find someone who has an extremely high body count, the less likely they're going to be loyal. You got to be careful with that. If you have a high ass body count, if you, if you're sleeping around like crazy, yeah, we're going to have to put you in a void tier. Then we got pinning the blame on only you and you only. This one isn't really about Gen Z specifically. Anyone can do this, but more people in Gen Z got that main character mentality. So be careful of people who do this because, well, they don't even change or admit their own mistakes, admit when they're wrong. No, they just pin the blame on you, 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 you. They don't focus on what they did wrong. So obviously nothing is going to change with them. And good luck trying to get your point across or trying to convince them to do something. And if they do this action, it will advance the relationship even further. But no, no, they, they're going to be fixed. They're going to be closed off about it because every time they get mad, they pin the blame on you. Red flag tier. Next, we got Twitter energy. Now, this is a huge, huge red flag. If they're out here getting offended at every little thing you do, you need to get the fuck out that bitch like Usain Bolt. Run for your life, man. Or you're just going to be dealing with a really angry person all the time. Hey, Jessica, I'm the I'm the hit the gym. You want to go with? Are, are you calling fat? Oh my god, how dare you? Uh, no, I, 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 I'm just asking if you want to go to the gym. No, I secretly think you're calling me fat. I'm offended. What the fuck? We're going right right into the run tier. We're just gonna shh right into that run tier. Next, we got spoiled. Now, obviously, someone who's spoiled is not fun to be around in general. So then, why would you want a girlfriend or a boyfriend that's spoiled? If they cry about you getting them a fucking Kate Spade bag instead of a Gucci bag, then yeah, kick them to the curb. They don't deserve you, clearly. And they're just with you for the money, for the gifts or whatever it is. And clearly, they're not grateful for anything, so it's gonna be a pain in the ass to put up with them. So we're gonna have to throw that in the red flag tier. If you enjoyed this video, I got you. I got another one right there just for you on the end screen go watch it now summer camp you either loved it hated it or you're being forced by your parents to go summer camp was one of those things that it was like ah do i really gotta go to this thing like no one there actually wanted to go i mean maybe but most people there were being forced to go by their parents especially when we were really young like i was in like the fourth grade yeah i was in the fourth grade when i first started my summer camp and that's because my parents thought i was in the house too much playing video games so they just sent me off to summer camp and i was there for a whole week without birdie man it was tough and i was at a basketball camp and i sucked ass at basketball i was terrible and all day i was just thinking about how i was going to be playing mario galaxy 2 when i got home so of course like i physically did not want to be there i was already mentally checked out in the car on the way there like i already wanted to like be home for the summer like i didn't want to do this you know i've been to my fair share of day camps but this was like new territory for me i've been to like previous sports camps that were just day camps but this one was for a whole week we didn't have to stay overnight or nothing but it was an entire week long and now i just remember my entire group just misbehaving the whole time like we we did not follow directions like one bit those poor camp counselors are probably like oh my god we really got to deal with these fucking bastards for a week jesus christ it's probably like some middle-aged man he's probably got a beer in one hand like Ugh. Sean, just make sure these bastards just shoot hoops, okay? Uh, right on it, sir. So yeah, you'd either have like a Karen or like a middle-aged man, or you'd have a college kid as your camp counselor. So yeah, we were basically just being told what to do for an entire day. I mean, we would have been off the rails if we weren't told what to do. But yeah, the week was pretty standard boring but I had to go again. I didn't really enjoy the first experience all that much. I mean, it was okay, but holy shit, man. I did not want to go again. So this time I chose swim as my sport. That was a great choice, past duck. Jesus, man. It wasn't like I couldn't swim at all. I mean, I was able to stay afloat at least. I mean, I've done my swimming lessons. Yes, sir. Let's go. Like my mom basically signed me up for swim at that point. She's like, oh, uh, you like swimming in the pool, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, swim camp it was. So I went for a whole week. I mean, it was nice swimming in the pool and not baking in the sun all day. We we did like some all sorts of swimming drills throughout the day, like bobbing underwater or whatever, swimming back and forth, doing like freestyle butterfly or whatever the hell it is. And then we got to the point where we were treading water for five minutes and... I think you all know where this is going. So there's this kid in somewhat close proximity to me. And then 30 seconds or so, I feel like the water's starting to get like really, really warm. I'm like, 
Oh, that's kind of weird. Like, it was warmer than the normal water temperature. Yeah, it, it just felt off. And yeah, I'll just rip off the band-aid he pissed in the pool. Fuck me. So right there I was, treading water, trying not to fucking sink because I was in the deep end. But yeah, I'm the big boy and I can deal with the deep end. Yeah, actually, not when there's fucking piss in my nostrils. Nope. So there I was, trying not to go under or inhale this piss water. Like, I should have seen that coming from, like, a mile away. Like, like this has got to be, like, the most common thing that happens. All right, come on. Just stay up. Think about your Clash of Clans base. Come on, don't let don't let the barbarians down. Your Mammoth and Toe Jammer are waiting for you back on your phone. Come on, lock in. Don't inhale the piss water. Don't die. Yeah, my brain was going in circles. I was just trying to like think about my fucking mobile games and my Wii U the whole time. But it did help me distract from the piss water. So that was quite the intro to my summer camp experience. So we get to seventh grade and now I'm at a football camp, American football. So I started playing football a year prior to that and I signed up for this camp and it was only for a day. And man, this camp was like fucking intense as shit, bro. Like the conditioning was like on a whole nother level of crazy. Like Nothing like I've seen before. Like, come on, big boy, let's go! Get to that donut! <gasps> Coach, I can't do it! I can't! Get your fat ass over there! Sprint! Sprint! Yeah, it was crazy. But hey, got me in good shape for a seventh grader, I'll say that. And man, I did not want to be loafing at this camp, bro, because these two coaches would have gotten on my fing head. Like, that just would have been extremely tough. But yeah, I remember him calling me six footer, even though I was like, five foot five i guess i mean he was right i'm fucking six feet now so maybe bro projected my height he looked at me and he's like you know what that kid's gonna be six feet one day like that nickname's gotta be like after a fucking subway sandwich or something like that's what it sounds like and i continued to go to these football day camps and continue to pursue football throughout middle school and early high school until sophomore year and you know what happened sophomore year i continue playing but a part of being on a, on the team you had to go to this overnight football camp in the mustiest oh cabins God. on earth and you had to spend five days with your teammates in a musty ass cabin and i was nervous as shit for this so we get there on some like janky ass bus we get out and already man it was going wild so we all sat down on our shitty beds i wouldn't even call them beds those hay mattresses that's probably what they were jesus the mattress was like fucking this thin bro it was, it was bad and already like i don't know a few hours in we already had a practice to go to and man we just fucking got there and the conditioning was even it was even worse than it was in the other football camp like that even got me huffing and puffing man like it was crazy but for the most part it was a fairly normal practice that first day and yep people showered together at the in the bathroom the one musty bathroom that there was i really don't get the appeal man so i, I just went in a fucking trailer shower took a shower and it was a pretty fairly normal day for the rest of the night and then i heard the coach say at night we just got done watching film for like the 50th time and he said, All right, set your alarms for five in the morning tomorrow. We're going to be up bright and early. What? Five in the... Five in the morning, bro! I was just thinking about handing in my pads then and there, man. Like, holy fuck. And that, that was when the conditioning was hitting, bro. 5 a.m. practices. Woo! I remember just bear crawling down the entire field, bro. That that was like one of the like conditionings at the end of the practice. And I did not sleep good that night prior to the 5 a.m. practice. So I was like sluggish as shit that entire day. Because, well, one, there was a shitty bed. And two, there was this one kid that wouldn't shut the fuck up. Bro was like snoring so fucking loud. Bro was over there like... Like, shut the fuck up! I was about to smack this dude with a pillow. Like, my roommates already have told this kid, like, be quiet, like, five times. And he just continued to snore because he wouldn't, he would refuse to sleep on his side. You know, the last day was pretty solid, but other than that, like, the rest of the days were brutal. There was one day I woke up and my fucking calf was, like, screaming for help. Ready? I guess that's how trash the bed quality was. I mean, my calves were like dying. Like, I didn't know what was going on. Like, I was getting leg cramps like every morning. It was basically 
football if it was boot camp, bro. Like, holy shit. And whenever we messed up a drill, oh, whoo, it was the end of the world. Everyone was getting mad at each other, and of course, we had push-ups to get on the fucking ground. Discipline. I coach discipline. It's on two. I say it's on two. And believe me, you did not want to be that kid that messed up. Because obviously, we're a team, and the whole team would do push-ups if one kid messed up. And of course, I would be so pissed off at the kid that messed up. It really did teach me good discipline. So, you know, I really got to thank football camp for that one. If your parents force you to go to summer camp, just try to make the most of it. It was hit or miss some days for me. If you enjoyed this video, I got you. Got another video right there just for you on the end screen. Go watch it now. The worst Gen Z slang. So this part three was long awaited and much needed as there's more and more Gen Z slang popping out the cut every single day. And we're going to be ranking some of the worst of the worst gen z slang and of course when isn't it ruined by tiktok like i don't know how a human being can even use any of these in daily conversation but we'll start with grippy how do you even say this one bro like seriously like basically what it means is it refers to a girl's uh <coughs> that's really all i can say i'm not gonna go into a whole ass urban dictionary definition description a lot of people on tiktok started saying it and any attractive girl on tiktok boom you see it in the comment section <laughs> Is it creepy? Like, shut your stupid ass up, bro. You only be able to test that theory out yourself if you keep saying that shit. Well, technically, does it agree with me? Bro, th there's always these weirdos that just comment this shit. And they think it's peak comedy or something. I don't know. Below F tier. What the hell is this? That is clearly a rough start. Next, we got another new one. Canon event. What the fuck? Apparently, it's an event that's like a really important part of your arc as a human being, as an individual. Like, I don't know, me saving up for a PC was a canon event. It just needs to be front and center of my arc as a human being. Like, I guess it just refers to the most important parts of your lore, I guess. I don't know. C tier. It really just doesn't roll off the tongue. Then you got blood. And there are so many other variations of blood, it's insane. So first there was bro. Now bro was, I think bro was a pretty solid S tier. I use it every day. Then people out of nowhere just start saying blood instead of bro, which honestly had me confused. Then you got people saying blog, blog, huh? blood is not relaxing. Blog thinks he can chill after a long day of his nine to five. Like what the fuck? Dude? I guess you could just make your own variation at this point. Bro Sivius really thinks he's him. Like, I, I don't fucking know. Like, I could say anything. I guess anyone will, will run with it. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I just say Brokowski and then someone just uses it in a TikTok. There's probably already so many variations out there. Like, I just found one that says, Blood Amir really thought he could eat for free. Zog is not happy. Like, bro, what the hell? D tier. It it's just too random. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I just don't get the joke. Maybe I'm just not cultured like that. Next up, we got Gat, or Goddamn. I guess that's short for Goddamn. So I guess I'd picture it going something like this. Yo, dude, did you just see that girl? Woo! Damn. Yo, bet. that's a dime piece. Gat. What? If someone said that, it just said Gat out of nowhere. I would have been confused as hell. I've been seeing this term everywhere. Anywhere I go, especially in a streamer's chat, bro. Like, that word will be spammed. Like, the word itself isn't terrible, but it's just overused everywhere. So, we're gonna have to go with, like, a solid, ah, C tier. I would have gave it B if it wasn't spammed everywhere. Alpha. Ugh. I hate the term alpha male, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Chad is where it's at. So, Chad's gonna be getting an S tier. I don't even have to say nothing for Chad. But alpha male, there's just so many cringy people that use it that it just completely ruins the word for me. Like, they'll sit there and say, I'm in the living room watching my daddy Andrew. And these people will just call someone a beta for basically nothing. Like, if you're so insecure to the point where you call people beta males or whatever, you're just a bum. Like, how much of a loser do you sound like? Just shut the fuck up and focus on yourself, bro. Because that, if anything, that, that makes you less alpha if you're just sitting there focusing on other people. D tier. Chad better. Bubblegum pink. <laughs> garbage. Absolute garbage term. Whoever came up with that needs to, like, be sent to the gulag right now. And, yep, again, it refers to the color of a girl's private part. Like, they think, th these motherfuckers think they're gonna get play by saying any of this. Like, there's, we're gonna be 10 years down the line. I'm gonna, like, be at a bar, and I guess I'll hear some kids say this like it's a completely normal thing. Because somehow people think this is, like, normal behavior. Hi, I'm Bartholomew. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you look like a snack. 
Uh, thanks? I was wondering, I was just wondering. I mean, my buddy Nielsen's over there. He was also wondering, is it bubblegum pink? If I was a girl and someone said that to me, I would slap them in the face, too. Below F tier again. Next, we got P. Now, I'm saying this one all the time, bro. I don't know. It's been growing on me for months and months. And I'm guilty of saying this one a lot. Like, somehow, maybe you might say this video is peak entertainment. This one, it, it's harmless. Like, it's used to describe something that's, like, extremely good. So, yeah, this one, I, I like it. I'm giving it an A tier. Then we got another good one. That dog in a bro. I fucking love this one, bro. Holy sh- I guess it just refers to someone who's a beast on and off the basketball court. Like someone, let's say someone climbed Mount Everest. I guess bro's got that dog in him. It's used to describe someone who's like hella brave. So we'll get, we'll give it an S tier. Then you got Musty. Now it's, it's a nice way of describing someone who smells bad and looks disgusting. Looking like they just rolled out of bed and it's been like a few weeks since they showered. They're looking like a full on discord moderator. Like it's like the best way to describe it. Or people could describe like certain scents or food as musty. Like school lunch, that shit, oh my God, so musty. Like that shit just smells terrible. And this word wouldn't have been invented if people just showered and school lunch didn't exist. Anyways, we'll, we'll give it a nice solid A tier. Next we got hear me out. Now this one, it, it could just lead to just trash. It's an up in the air kind of saying. Like it depends what you're saying hear me out to. So here's the point of view of a normal versus a not so normal, hear me out. Yo, boys, hear me out, hear me out. We get some eats, and we're throwing a function at the crib tonight. Yo, I'm down, down. Hey, fireball. I'm down. hey, I'll be there. Yo, yes, sir, I'm in, I'm in. Go. Hey, Millie, what? Hear me out. <laughs> Bob, that's your sister. <laughs> No, isn't she attractive? What, in tarnation? Obviously, that's a bit dramatized, but some people say hear me out to... <sighs> people they shouldn't be saying hear me out to. We'll, we'll just say that. And then some people just say hear me out to, like, someone they find attractive in general. But you have that side of the spectrum where it gets really weird, too. So just for that, it, uh, it's getting an F tier. Sorry. Next up, we got queen slash king. Now, this one, eh... I don't know. And no, this isn't referring to like King Tut or whatever fucking King stick up the ass the fifth. No. Queen and King can refer to just anyone, I guess. Like someone's friend could like do something crazy and then they'll say, oh my God, pop off queen, slay girl, oh my God, or whatever. I don't know. I really don't rock with it like that. So Queen and King's gonna have to get a C tier from me. Oh, Material hell, no, girl. No, what the fuck? I don't even know what this means, but it was like a TikTok trend and people were saying material girl back in like 2022, but still it's pretty recent. This saying it's completely died, I think. Unless some of you hear people still saying material girl on the daily. I don't even know what it means, so I'm just gonna give it a fucking <laughs> F tier. Although I don't know what it means, the trend was like really material annoying. Material girl, like shut the fuck. Mommy. Uh, just why you know my spiel about this one if you watch the channel you are not getting any play if you call brecky hill mommy in the comment section if you know you know though Woo. nah but seriously though what i don't get it you just look like you're in the trenches at that point like you know my spiel by now it's going in f tier next we got ballin now it can refer to someone being like rich as fuck like they're they got like 50k up to their both of their ears like the baby or whatever or they got like a bentley coupe in a mansion like bros ballin or someone could just say it on the basketball court i don't know uh, but i really like the saying overall i'm gonna give it an a tier meat riding now this saying uh it, it got ruined it got absolutely ruined by tiktok you can literally just say you like someone's content and i like playboy carty music the meat riding's crazy oh my god he's meat riding <laughs> it's nuts like you can't even praise any content creators nowadays without saying you're glazing originally it was good i'll give it that so if it was actually used as it was intended Ended, I would give it a B tier. Comment the letter Z if you made it this far and binge this playlist on the end screen if you're a real one. I promise you won't work. Group chats. It is the primary communication method with the homies. Most people's friend groups communicate through a group chat because, well, everybody's in it. So, of course, with everyone being in it, you're going to get many different types of behavior in the group chat that you all have to see at some point in your life. And everyone with the group chat, you can vouch for me. These types of people are always in a group chat. Now, it really depends on the lifespan of the group chat. It could last like a week. It could last a month, a year, etc. But usually when a group chat started, everyone goes nuts. 
nuts. Like, no, it will yo, literally yo. blow up your phone if you're added to it. So I used to play football, and I remember being added to a football group chat. And as soon as it was made, just boom, texts were coming in rapid fire. That was probably the largest group chat I was in. So, of course, it blew up my phone. But if it's just you and, like, six other people, then probably not. And after a while of seeing texts go through, you budge and see what the hell this group chat's all about. See what the hell people are saying because, well, it's popping, apparently. And then you open up your, your group chat, your heart's racing. <laughs> And it's a bunch of TikToks and reels. But yeah, that, that was pretty anticlimactic. I would open up the group chat. And it would just be like 50 TikToks and Instagram reels or, or me. I thought the beef of the century was going down. Like the friend group was like going up into fucking flames. I'm like, oh shit, what the hell is happening? Yeah, that's usually what happens when a new group chat's made. Like every single goddamn TikTok and Instagram reel on the planet is sent in there. And then some kid sends the most unfunny meme ever. And that's where things start to escalate a little bit. You know, everyone was vibing with the other videos except for this one there's always that one kid that sends the unfunny meme or has a brick moment it says something really stupid and then everyone gets on his ass uh oh pause. this kid just gets absolutely violated sometimes it's unjust and other times not so much yo function at my place tonight pop out bet i'm down i'm bringing the hose word Ah, fiddlesticks, brethren. I gotta feed my gerbil. I can't make it tonight. And plus, my mom said so. And my bedtime's 8 p.m. sharp. Hell nah, who let bro in the studio? Yo, ain't no way this man just said feed my gerbil. Fuck your gerbil. Let that motherfucker starve and pop out. Come on, Nielsen. Stop being a pussy. Who even said you were invited? And then you'd have this kid that would have a full-on plan for a hangout, bro. Like, he'd be plotting and shit. And he comes up with the craziest plan within seconds. He's just casually throwing a function tonight. Or sometimes, you would just straight up get air even if you came up with this insane plan for people to hang out and it would be the most tragic thing on the planet it's more likely to happen if you're you know not really one of the more active ones in the group if you're not like the group leader or some shit you will definitely get aired especially if you're like that one kid that never talks there's always one of them they're, they just read all the messages with a bucket of popcorn in their hand they're just indulging in all the friend group shenanigans or beef that's going down never know sometimes this kid would get absolutely pressed for saying nothing Wait, where did Jonathan go? Bro, he just he just went MIA as soon as he joined. He said, send one meme and he's out. What the fuck? And you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I am that kid. I will never talk in group chats. I don't know, bro. I just prefer to chill. But yeah, being the quote-unquote ghost of the group chat, no one really says anything to you, to be honest. They just do their own thing, basically. It's like you're in fucking spectator mode, bro. You're just spectating the group chat, bro. That's how I felt every time. And then when I did say something, they'd be like, oh, fuck, duck, you're alive? What the hell? Oh, shit, my boy got revived. Where the hell did he spawn in from? It was like Playboy Cardi dropped a new album when I talked in the group chat. I was MIA for three years and then boom a whole lot of red you know what i'm saying but it really does help with people valuing what you say more that's why i really love being the ghost in the group chat because the homies will know it's important if you say something it's not a real a tiktok stupid drama stupid beef it is never that because there was always one kid that would just start group chat beef for no reason it was like an all-day event of just talking chatting beefing and of course i would just watch this shit go down because well i'm the ghost i don't do shit i was just sitting there with my bucket of popcorn yo boys gonna ask out jessica today bro wish me luck what? bro you knew that i was gonna ask out jessica Let's just get the fuck out of here, bro. Nah, she's mine, bro. What are you talking about? Bro, she doesn't even want you. Like, Jesus Christ. Doc, I see you in there. I see your stupid bitmoji. What do you have to say about this? Uh, oh. But yeah, Brad and Chad will be fighting over a girl one day, and uh, it's up to you to defuse the beef. And then everyone else will join in trying to defuse the beef, or they, they just let it play out. It really depends on how deep it is. But if it's like really petty like that, no one really cares. They just mute the group chat and then go on with their day. And once everything clears up and goes back to normal, everyone will start talking and sending memes as usual. And sometimes people will just straight up ignore it and just say some other shit. Like no one wants to hear about your drama, like take it somewhere else, take it outside in private DMs, not in a fucking group chat. And sometimes there's people who you really don't fuck <gasps> with, but you're kind of like acquainted with in a group chat. Now I don't even know why you'd have a group chat with people if you don't really fuck with them that much and those are the group chats i was kind of the ghost in is like there were some people in the group chat i wasn't like tight tight with but you know i was like acquainted with them so what people would do is they would have a sub group chat with like the tight tight homies in it four of them or something
something and then everyone else in the other group chat now obviously this can definitely lead to problems and beef and if people find out there's like a sub group chat for the other group chat then yeah there, there might be some beef but for me i just accepted that i wasn't that close to like the the friends that set up the group chat in comparison to the others but there were people who were a little bit upset about that when they found out it was like the end of the world why the fuck was i not added in the sub group chat add me real quick wait there's a group chat damn so it's just been us the whole time uh, i mean i i guess so of course there's another one these ones always die out mad quick i swear uh, they would normally wouldn't answer or maybe let's say like because you're a bitch or something like that like not really a serious response which is usually what happens sometimes in groups there's always that one kid that never <laughs> takes anything serious and will just joke about anything or joke about anything at any time oh fuck boys i just got in a bad car accident and then bro will respond with something like <laughs> skill issue man shut your Yes, I don't see you whipping a vehicle, bro. Wait a minute. Oh shit, you don't even have your license. Bro failed his driving test and out of nowhere, boom, he'll just get flamed. You don't want to mess with people in the group chat or else you're going to get flamed. Like I said earlier, even in the most tragic moments or sometimes you people would use group chats to help each other out or to get a bit wholesome and they could give each other advice. This is pretty rare. But yeah, some people just ask for advice in these Johns, but who else would you trust but the homies for a rational answer? So the advice kid, we'll call him, I don't know. So he'll, he'll be ranting on about like a situation that happened today and he's just gonna ask people what he should do So usually there's like one person that gives him a straight answer um, I, You should do this this and this it's like a whole brick wall and everyone else is puts arrows like yeah Yeah, do that as well group chats most of the time it's, it's meant for like memeing around but on the off chance It might happen. So of course everyone's agreeing with this brick wall paragraph and then you have who asked who asked bro You don't know how bad I want to punch this kid through the screen wherever I see who asked in a fucking group chat it just pisses me off like if you really didn't care that much why would you waste the time to type that out like you should just like left it on red or something like most of the time people will just remove people out of a group chat for being cringe or saying some dumb shit like sure group chats are meant for just straight up buffoonery but if you take it too far you're getting the boot that's just how it goes because if the group chat gets leaked we're all getting expelled suspended principal's office etc because who isn't chatting in the group chat bro like someone's gotta be being chatted on like oh my god this teacher is the biggest op on the planet or something oh yeah this employer guy this manager he thinks he's all that and a bag of chips he's all that and a fucking douche so of course everyone has a common enemy and uh we're all gonna target the common enemy in this group chat yo fuck larry dude this guy can suck my fat willy what did bro do this time wait what happened he made me stay an hour after closing and he talked to me about how i need to do my job better and that i need to bring more energy to the workplace like shut your bitch ass up hell nah man that dude is a bomb bro what yeah that larry guy can suck it bro looks like that one motherfucker from blues clues <laughs> nah for real though what you doing there buddy Whoa, what the fuck hey larry hey hey buddy okay that did not happen to me but imagine though so yeah people just rant about others in this group chat if you're your douchey manager your dentist appointment whatever it is there would always be the guy that starts ranting now usually people normally don't text the group chat by accident it rarely happens unless someone is absolutely plastered out of their mind like they're doing zero cognitive functioning right now bro they're just like mm -hmm. and they're over they're just texting letters like a bunch of E's and O's or whatever. And the homies, oh, they'll know. It's they're not even gonna question it. They're gonna know Stan is wasted out of his mind. Or the kid could just be absolutely blasted. That could happen too. Like just having a conversation with someone that is absolutely blasted or wasted is just too fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're the dog with the Kanye <gasps> jacket. What? <laughs> By far the most hilarious interaction in the group chat. So depending on how loyal your homies are or how tight the friend group is, your group chat will last a year maybe, a couple years, or sometimes it just dies after a few weeks. Then after, you know, everything just dies down, it'll, some kid will just send a meme out of nowhere and it'll just be straight crickets. Now, since this video was about group chats, you know, I could not have done it without the goats right here on screen. Green. Big shout out to all of them for helping me out with the skits. I really just summoned the Avengers for this one, bro. Holy shit. Clearly you enjoyed the video if you made this far. I got more right there. Hey, you're a real one if you click that playlist. Go mobile games. There are some absolute classics out there. And then there's also mobile games that are straight up booty. So I had an iPod Touch. I had so many classic games on here. And I still play some of these to this day. But now as the years went on, there's just some serious gun.
garbage in the app store and today we're going to be discovering mobile games then versus now we'll start with dumb ways to die this was honestly one of my favorite games growing up dumb ways to die was basically these wario wear type of mini games and you try to get the highest score possible and unlock all the characters by your train station it was a really simple game but i just loved it. and you bet your ass i pledged not to do dumb shit around train and my eight-year-old brain i think the point got across pretty well so we'll give them dumb ways to die an a tier now we got mario kart tour now this one it was okay this one was released four years ago and i don't know i think it's kind of mid i'm not gonna lie it got pretty boring and i don't know why they didn't just make a new mario kart on the switch bro like that, that's what we all really needed these muff are milking mario kart deluxe just make a new one on the switch bro and there's not even multiplayer on mario kart tour like what the hell c tier was a pretty mid game among us do i even gotta say anything the terminology just ruined it i'm sorry i just can't look at among us the same anymore and it just doesn't compete with older mobile games whatsoever so yeah we're gonna have to give it a d tier subway surfers this game you just jump and dodge trains basically it's kind of like temple run see how far you can get it was a pretty simple premise and the graphics were visually appealing so visually appealing to enough to the point where you see it all over tiktok just slap some family guy at the, at the top and put subway surfers on the bottom and boom you have yourself a tiktok and add some pop-up text and boom that's it your peter griffin clips accounts blowing up i fucked with it but it's not really goat status so i'll give it like a b tier homescapes now this game, it's Bond. Maybe I just don't like matching games, or maybe I don't like the tons of ads I've been seeing for this game after I die in whatever game it is. And yeah, these ads are just spammed everywhere. And any other modern matching games like Gardenscapes or Fishdom or whatever the hell it is. I don't even remember any of the names, honestly, but there's so many matching games that I don't even know the name of. That's how many ads I've been seeing for them. But they don't even advertise the game as is. And I don't like matching games either. So it's just going in the F tier, it sucks. Then you got Clash Royale and Clash of Clans. Now I'm gonna put these two in one category. It's a straight goat. I still play them to this day. Like sure it's pay to win, but still it's a good game. And back when I played Clash Royale in 2016, bro, I was raging. This emo right here, bro, that this shit got me fuming. Hee <laughs> hee hee hee. Like shut the f like it would get me so mad. Like just something about that king, man. And Clash of Clans, bro, I made it a part of my daily routine to check my base every morning. Overall, I really loved both these games. S tier. It's just goaded. And now that we're on the topic of Supercell, we got Brawl Stars next. I'd say it's a fairly new game, more of a modern mobile game. And you know what? I actually really like it. I'm not even gonna lie. It's, it's basically a battle royale slash PvP style game. You push trophies, unlock brawlers, and there's a crazy skill gap. It is a pretty fairly difficult game to get into. And the best part of the game is you can run threes with your friends. Or you can run duo showdown with another person. The co-op options for this game are just unmatched, bro. You can also run custom games against each other, which is really fun. Sometimes the connection can suck, but other than that, it's a really great game. I'm gonna give it an A tier. Then you got any oh voodoo God, games. Bro. Now, voodoo games are just taking over, bro. Like, it is basically the only mobile game that I see see on tiktok aside from like subway surfers like you got this game for example you got aqua park io this game it's it's just straight mid. The graphics suck. The quality's terrible. It just doesn't even come close to an older mobile game or some of the classics. So yeah, it's just going in F tier. It sucks. And all these games are so boring and repetitive. Like there's no spice at all, man. Like you gotta spice it up once in a while. Like damn. Voodoo just really said, let's just take over the app store with the shittiest games possible. Balloons Tower Defense. Now I know this was a computer game too, but it was also on mobile. But this game was fire. You basically go for... 50 50 plus rounds try to defend against the balloons and the more balloons get that get past your towers you lose hp you try to set up the best defense possible with the monkeys and they all have their own abilities which makes the game even better which allows for different st types of strategies and my strategy is a timmy well i just spam super monkeys that's it although the super monkey was broken it, the game was still amazing s tier and balloons had so many good sequels as well and same with cut the rope cut the rope had some solid sequels as well basically you just cut this candy off the rope and feed it to this dude omnom it was basically just a 
puzzle game, and this game had me mad when I couldn't three-star the level. Especially those stars with the timer, bro. It would just tick down to zero, and then you almost had it. You were like a millisecond off. Ooh, that pissed me off. But it was a great game, and the sequels had their own unique gimmicks, so S tier again. My Singing Monsters. Now, this game has also been all over TikTok. It's kind of having a comeback, which I'm really happy to see, because, well, I, I used to play this game a lot back in the day. Like, look at my islands, bro. I was such a nerd. It's one of those idle breeding games. You breed monsters together, try to get a rare one, and collect coins and complete the song on every island by collecting all the monsters. I really fucked with this game. B tier. Like, you'll catch me and the homies doing a My Singing Monsters acapella. Like, one person will make the mammoth bum noise and it's over. Where's my water? I liked it. I wasn't, like, really a nerd with this game. I just quit because it, it, the puzzles just got too tough. I don't know. Maybe I was just a dumbass. Who knows? There's probably some nerd kid out there saying to himself, Well, I just think your intelligence is lacking. You are not on my intellectual level. I beat every single level and three star and got every single rubber ducky. Shut your stupid ass. Nerd. Nerd. Okay, I'm just kidding. It was a good game. B tier. Little Alchemy. Now, I don't see anyone talking about this game. Y'all are sleeping. Okay. I was absolutely addicted to this game. It wasn't like great or anything, but I just picked it up for a week, but it was like really addictive because you, know, you just got to get all those combinations. You know what I'm saying? I'll give it like a high C tier, low B tier. Nothing crazy. I just played the game a lot. Next, you got these cheap runner games. Y yeah, they suck. And then some of them have the goofiest ads imaginable. What the hell is that? Like, they really thought people s would see Big Booty Judy and they think they would just download their game automatically. Like, that's not how it works. No one even puts quality into their ads anymore. Like, I used to be able to sit through an entire mobile game ad without like dying of cringe these are getting an f tier from me bro they just suck and speaking of not being able to withstand ads especially from these like scenario episode games or whatever i don't even know what to call them but we've all seen shitty ads for these games where you just click a text bubble and then it gives you an option where it says like sleep with bradley or stay loyal to chadley like i don't know why even like focus on this like made up reality and live your own like it just doesn't make sense and some of these are just straight up foul bro like some of the ads i, I don't even know if i can show them on youtube yeah no nah, i'm gonna have to sauce that one in the g tier if i'm refusing to get gameplay for these yeah they're going in g tier word puzzle games some of them are eh I mean, it's a word puzzle game. It's boring. But it's like, it's a, such a pathetic attempt to motivate you to download them through these ads. They would make a robot absolutely fail at the word and be like, and I guess Timmy's supposed to be like, oh my god, I can get that easy. And boom, they're playing the little fucking ad demo. I guess that's how they try to rope you in. Just by showing someone fail at the, the game miserably. D tier. Pokemon Go. Basically walk around outside and catch Pokemon. In 2016, guess what? Everyone was outside on their phone glued to their screens catching Pokemon. This game had a serious takeover, and if you see any 2016 throwback videos, you will see Pokemon Go in there. That's how much of a classic it is. It went outside the box of the typical mobile gaming field, so it was just bound to pop off from the start. And yeah, I'm gonna have to give this an A tier. It was really fucking good. Angry Birds. That was probably my first mobile game, and this was so OG to the point where I was playing it on my mom's iPad. That's how OG this game was. I didn't even have my own device to play it on first. I was like, they got any games on your phone, kid? But yeah, you'd basically launch birds at pigs. That was basically the premise of the game, and yeah, my aim with the launcher, it was so bad. I had that stormtrooper aim for real, like, it was tough. I still somehow got past levels. I don't know how. I was in like grade one. S tier. Fruit Ninja. I fucked with it, but it got really boring after like 30 minutes. And it couldn't keep my child brain stimulated. Like, it's a classic. It just got really boring after a while, so we'll place it in B tier. Plants vs. Zombies. Now this... This is definitely my favorite mobile game of all time. Either that or Angry Birds. I already know y'all were spawn camp in this video waiting for me to talk about PvP. He's like, <gasps> is he gonna talk about it? Come on, come on. But yeah, it's a fucking amazing game. And with a banger sequel. So we just gotta put that shit in S tier. The amount of hours I put into this game trying to collect all the plants is crazy. Super Bino Go? What the fuck? Obviously, it sucks, and it's a Mario knockoff. Why would I play this stupid mobile game when I can go to my Nintendo Switch or dust off the old Wii and play some Mario Bros? Like, if I could play Mario Bros with much better quality. Or hell, I'd rather download Mario Run and pay $10. The controls suck, and it's trash. Yes, I actually played it. That was my gameplay. D tier. Watch this playlist on the end screen if you're a real one. Go watch it. Go watch it.
Bro, what the hell are you waiting for? Click the vid- Gen Z childhood crushes. If you were born in Gen Z, well, I'm sure you can heavily, heavily relate to this video. Because, well, we had the same media, the same celebrities were popping. We basically had the same pop culture growing up. Like, this is gonna be one of the most relatable videos on the channel. So, I don't even know where the hell to start. So, back in the day, I used to watch this show called Sesame Street. Okay, no, I was not catching feelings at three years old, I promise. But my very first crush happened when I was eight years old. You know what happened? I was introduced to Pokemon. Pokemon. And there was this guy, and his name was Brock. Oh, shit. Okay, I was not swinging that way, I promise. But Brock, this dude, he was a simp. And whenever Nurse Joy or Officer Jenny would pull up to the scene, this motherfucker would get on his hands and knees. And this motherfucker would beg them to marry him. And I was right there with- Okay, no, I wasn't. But once I saw Officer Jenny, I knew I was fucking straight from that day forward. And I was mad because they had such little screen time. Like it said, you have to deal with fucking Dawn chatting the entire time. Like I wanted a show- revolved around Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny. I was really coming up with some crazy plot line to see my childhood crush on screen for more time. Yeah, I was an interesting eight-year-old. And that wasn't it for Pokemon. What y'all know about Professor Ivy? Now, for this one, I didn't even have to think about it. I fell in love in like a split second. And if you thought the other two were worse, this one was even worse. My Metapod used Harden for the first time ever. Only real ones will get that joke. And there were more. Don't worry, because I watched Adventure Time too. Marceline, which it might be responsible as to why I got a little bit, a little bit of a goth fever. Just a tad bit. Not this goth, but this goth. Yeah, yeah I guess that's where it all stemmed from. Eight-year-old me watching Adventure Time. And she was far more chill than Princess Bubblegum. She had a stick up her ass 24-7. And every time Finn went to the Candy Kingdom, I just turned off the TV. I did not want to deal with Princess Bubblegum. Bubblegum is just a professional yapper. She just loves yapping about nothing. And I just get a whole lot of main character energy from Bubblegum. Then I started watching a little bit of Nickelodeon, just a tad bit. And my friend introduced me to the show called Barely Odd Parents. And you know, I started watching the show, binging it a little bit. And then I laid eyes on Timmy's mom. Now I know Timmy's mom and dad sounded like absolute NPC robots, but still that didn't phase me, bro. I know Timmy's, especially Timmy's dad. Dingleberg. This dude was definitely made in a fucking laboratory. And speaking of mom crushes, this wouldn't be a childhood crushes video without this next one. This is incredible. If she was single, I would have stepped up as the father type shit. I would have stepped up as a dad taking full due diligence and responsibility of two children at the age of nine years old. Trust me, I would have locked in. I would have done it for Mrs. Incredible. I was willing to take that responsibility to become Mr. Incredible. And plus, I would have been in a family full of superpowers. That would have been fire as hell. Mrs. Incredible was definitely towards the top of my list. We'll say that. Like, if you are a straight male and didn't have a crush on Mrs. Incredible when you were a kid, who even are you, bro? You're a bot, bro. You go beep, boop, bop. Like, you can't have human emotions and feelings if you did it. Okay, I'm just kidding. But seriously, how? Like, seriously, type up a fucking essay in the comments of how you didn't. Total drama. Where do I even start? I had a whole fucking laundry list of crushes. It was not just one in the show. It was like fucking goddamn, you had Bridget over there, fucking Zoe, goddamn Gwen, Courtney, like, whole Holy f- I had a whole laundry list. Okay, I didn't have an actual list. I had a mental note. Fifth grader me couldn't choose. I was in the trenches for total drama, bro. It was nuts. But some of you may or may not have had a crush on Heather. Now, I cannot get behind this one. Because she was a bitch. I don't care about that one scene in the show. Like, shut the fuck up. She was a bitch and a snake. Like, I wasn't rocking with that. I just found Heather so annoying. Because she would just screw other people over to win. Or no, to lose. My bad. Because she lost lost to Owen, I think, in season one. But then in season three, she won, and it pissed me off. Like, none of the players even liked Heather either. Neither did the host himself. Chris fucking hated her. Just an absolute unlikable character. I don't know what goddamn little Timmy ass soul was crushing on Heather, because there would there should be none. I shouldn't see a single comment that said, well, when I was uh, seven years old, approximately, I actually did, in fact, have a crush on Heather. I wanted her to step on- Okay, no, too far, too- Seriously, though, I cannot get behind that. Teen Titans. Now, Teen Teen Titans Go was a massive downgrade from Teen Titans. I'm not talking about Teen Titans Go. That shit was ass, but the OG Teen Titans had Lil Bro fallen in love, especially with this one character, Blackfire. And he got Raven and then Starfire. Now, these characters seemed a lot more chill in Teen Titans in comparison to Teen Titans Go, especially Starfire. Like, it's like you gave them all a bunch of crack, like even Raven a little bit. They were just far more likable characters than Teen Titans. And now, I was in 
the fourth grade when I figured this out that Teen Titans would no longer be airing, and I was distraught, bro. Just fucking shot to the heart, bro. It was a tough pill to swallow. So I moved on from that, put on my big boy pants, and I finally got my first IRL crush. I was in the fourth grade. I don't know when y'all got your first elementary school crush, but I kept that shit a goddamn secret from everyone because I knew the ops were gonna snitch. Duck, do you have a crush on anyone? No. No one. <laughs> no one had the pieces to the puzzle except me. I didn't want the girl to find out. Because if she did, I would have had my first awkward moment in elementary school. And the rest of the school year would have been awkward as hell. Now, I also had very, very many celebrity crushes. And uh, throughout the rest of my childhood, I also noticed everyone else had the same crushes. Like, every girl was fiending for Justin Bieber. Everyone had that Bieber fever. It was like everyone was standing Justin Bieber. Everyone had a goddamn poster of Justin Bieber. Bieber in their fucking locker. But if you did not have a crush on Ryan Reynolds, who are you? Because I do. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But the, the biggest one I remember was Justin Bieber. For goddamn Jacob Sartori. Bro was popping. I don't even. He made some ass music, bro. That show was garbage. So he lip synced songs instead and got famous. I just remember every girl simping for this dude. I guess bro just spawned in out of fucking nowhere. I don't know what the Jacob Sartorius hype train was all about. Some girls I like talked to in my school were, were just beaning over Justin Bieber. I remember they're like, oh my god, if you heard of Justin Bieber, blah, blah. The standing was crazy. And I'm like, who is that? And they went crazy. Like, you haven't heard of Justin Bieber? Oh, my God. Because me, I was so uncultured with celebrities, bro. If you said, do you know who this person is? I probably well, wouldn't sure. be able to He's answer that question. Problem. Unless it was Britney Spears. Yup. If you were a real one, you would have a crush on Britney Spears. Whenever I heard her songs on the radio, my mom caught me doing my little shitty acapella in the car. Give me, give me more, give me, You like Britney Spears? More. And me, the dumbass, thinking that the world was gonna end if I said yes. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I don't. No, 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 uh, her music's trash and she's, uh, she's ugly. I got mad defensive for no reason. I don't know why I was hiding it like it was a bad thing. I got more singers. Trust, bro, I got a whole fucking arsenal. I know half the video was about my cartoon character crushes growing up, but man, I was a fucking celebrity guy. I ain't gonna hold you. We got Nicki Minaj. Now, when her song and a Honda was popping. I saw the music video. Now, if you haven't seen it, it's a whole lot of ass. Literally. I don't know how I ended up seeing it. My best guess is my parents were shuffling music through YouTube. I was a big Anaconda fan back in the day. So I tell them, put on Anaconda. And they clicked the music video. And they watch it for like a whole two seconds. And they say, Duck, what the f***? We're in a Christian family household on a Christian Everybody Minecraft server. Are you already down bad at age 11? Like, what's going on, buddy? But yeah, that, that was a pretty awkward moment. But after seeing that music video, oof, might have to add Nicki Minaj to that list. Then I turned about 12 years old and the list kept expanding because now we got Selena Gomez. You know what she says, bro. The heart wants what it wants and I wanted Selena Gomez. It was like my dream or something. When I saw that picture of her on Music Choice, I was, it was over. I was in love. It was true love, I promise. Yeah, my parents would have this thing on called Music Choice. It was like a music radio on TV. Obviously, yeah, it's a channel that would play music all day. And through this, I was introduced to many more singers. Like Ariana Grande, goddamn Camila Cabello, whoo, Dua Lipa. Like, yeah, the list goes on. I definitely had the most crushes on singers when I was growing up. Like, it was, it was bad. My singers list as I was growing up started to deteriorate a little bit. But there's still some on there, I go. I'm like eight minutes into recording, realizing. I could have made a whole video on celebrity crushes and we haven't even gotten to the actresses yet Margot Robbie this wouldn't be a celebrities crushes section without Margot Robbie when I watched Wolf of Wall Street recently a very family-friendly movie by the way just letting you know okay no it's rated R but seriously when I saw Margot Robbie I'm like damn she bad but the first movie I saw with Margot Robbie in it was Suicide Squad and I don't care if the movie was mid because she was looking bad that is all that mattered to me like one once, once I, I realized the movie was going to be ass, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to enjoy the time with Margot Robbie. I completely forgot about the plot, and it was just I was just focused on Margot Robbie, though. And yeah, those are my childhood crushes. Uh, comment if you were in the same boat as me. And for this lawnmower to shut the fuck up. Anyways, uh, if you, I know you enjoyed that video. Click, click the playlist right now. Do it, do it. 
Hurry up. Which generation is truly the best? Today, I'm gonna find that out by rating each generation in all of these categories. And I was always curious, what was it actually like if I just spawned in the 1950s? So for the categories today, we got the slang, the pop culture, haircuts, fashion, and popular products and toys. The greatest generation, 1920s. Cuts, mid. What is this? Bro, you look like Arthur from Big Nate. But this one's not too bad though. He's got that little Mabu ass cut going. Most of the cuts were pretty generic, but some of them were pretty calm. Drip. Hi. People would literally walk around in suits. Like, suits are just prime drip. Like, it is you at your drippiest. Slang. Low. Alright, th these slang words gotta go, man. Like, they, they should just be abolished from society. Like, what the hell does G Willikers and the bee's huh? knees even mean? It sounds like it, it's within Aubrey Graham's dictionary. Most of the slang throughout that time just became really corny. Pop culture, high. It was called the Roaring Twenties for a reason. Like, they had Babe Ruth, one hell of a baseball player, and they had the one dude making the short films, where he wouldn't even say a single word, and that shit was still hitting. You had jazz music pulling up? Products. Low. Compared to other generations, what did they even have for entertainment? Nothing. Like, what did they do? Just throw rocks? Like, what was there genuinely to do? I don't think anybody would want to relive this shit. We're giving it a 1 out of 10. All that shit was that dog ass back then. Obviously, the technology's not gonna hold up, so we gotta give it low. Silent Generation, 1940s. Cuts, low. Alright, it somehow got worse than the 1920s. If I was repping this cut, it would look like I'm balding already. And then this is crazy, bro. I'm not gonna hold you. If I pulled up to the function looking like this, I'm not getting any bitches. Drip. Low. Again, why did you need to add suspenders to your suit? Like, keep that goddamn jacket on, bro. That's all I'm saying, man. Like, we do not need the suspenders. You look like Nielsen with them bitches on. And apparently, some people wore their pants so high, like they are goddamn Steve Urkel. What? Why? You gotta let them hang, bro. Let them sag. Not too much, though. To the point where you're seeing your underwear. Like, I wouldn't just get crowned for repping the Urkel fit. I would legitimately get tomatoes thrown at me if I stepped out the crib looking like this. The nipple pants, that's the reason why it's in low. Slang. Mid. It improved. It, this one actually improved. They actually have decent ones such as cooking with gas. And then we got Mrs. like geezer. What? They got funny ass ones like Chrome Dome. So I guess they would just be called Mr. Clean Chrome Dome. They had more weird ones like Above My Pay Grade and Gobbledygook. Pop culture, low. They didn't really have much going on for them in the 1940s because, well, there kind of was a war going on. So we're just gonna move on to products. And we're giving it low to mid. And then what did they do? Listen to fireside chats? Like, I don't know. That sounds pretty boring to me. When I looked up toys in the 1940s, there weren't any creepy ass dolls awaiting for me, so I think that's a good thing. I found the picture with the Glock, bro. Like, are kids carrying Glocks in the 1940s? What the fuck? Well, that would make for some pretty fire cops and robbers games. There was a whole ass world war going on. Negative 5 out of 10. Baby boomers, 1950s to 60s. Cuts. Gutter. Not even low. These cuts are so trash, bro. What is this cyborg ass cut? With that, you literally look like you got a square head. Like, you built like Jeff. Oh no, who is walking around with that? And then for the men's cuts? <coughs> <laughs> Bro's got the lamb chop bowl cut combo. Who even let bro out the house? Me personally, I would stay the hell inside with that cut. I couldn't even rank this one low. It was just such an experimental time for haircuts. And same with fashion. Gutter. We are going to the circus with this one. Like, where is the matching, bro? Red and yellow do not match. And then I don't even know how to explain this fit. This is not calm at all. He got the green socks too. Like, these are the wiggles before the wiggles. And you will never catch me dead wearing those pants either. The 20s was doing good with fashion. Now it was just going downhill over here. And then the hippie stuff, don't think I forgot about that. Trash. Like, it's all it's all garbage. Slang. Low. They called a good looking woman a fox. It sucked. And they came up with square, so we don't even gotta say anymore. Pop culture. Good. They had Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Frank Sinatra, and we can't forget the Beatles. And they had Batman, so you know what? That's good enough for me. Inventions slash products. High. They came up with 911. We gotta give it high. Like, we can't give it any lower than that. And they came up with bubble wrap. All right, this would have had me gone as a kid. Gen X, 1980s. Cuts, mid. There's so many hits and misses at the same time. Hair got very frizzy around this time, so I bet you all can only imagine. Fits, low to mid. All right, people started to get their shit together, but th there were still some really vibrant fits that didn't need to be there. When I think of 80s prime fits, I think of the mullet marauder from Fortnite. There was still some weirdness to the drip, but we're getting there. Slang will give 
give it good. There's some weird ones like eat my shorts, but it's better than anything that I'm seeing today. I would have gave it high, but they had shit like gag huh? me with the spoon. They had some good ones like bitchin, chill. Then you got hella, big whoop. It's better than be there, be square. So you know what, W. Pop culture, very high. Do I gotta sit here and explain at 8.03 p.m.? So many banger songs and movies in this era. The GOAT of basketball himself was on the court. Like, this is when stuff really started turning up for pop culture. And there's no way a human being is spawned on the planet and doesn't know who Michael Jackson is. Products, decent. The Pet Rock, dude. Oh How are you God. dumb enough to buy this thing? But they had, like, MP3 players or whatever the hell it is. The cassette thingy, I don't know what it's called. But seriously, how would you buy a pet rock and be satisfied with your purchase but for the most part video games started dropping in the 80s so it was it was a pretty good time like there was just a certain vibe to the 80s that you just cannot get in any other era technology started emerging there was like arcades and all that stuff so you know what we're gonna have to give it a 7 out of 10 it seemed like a very good era to grow up in heat millennials 1990s to early 2000s and the cuts around that time you know we'll give it very high i mean there were some misses like the minecraft block on your head will smith will smith Smith, bro. What is this? This shit is not hitting. I'm sorry. And then we get the macaroni penguin ass haircut. Other than those two, I didn't really see anything that bad. Fashion. Hi. This is when fashion actually started to become good. Except for the saggy ass shorts in the 2000s. Like, them bitches were long as hell for no reason. But other than that, it's just nice calm fits. Slang. Mid. I mean, there's some that are, like, really, really corny, like, was up? Bro, no one is saying was up with Zs. And then we have whatever, apparently that's slang, and then my bad, which everyone says. Like, th there's no way you don't say those two. You know what? I'm gonna change my answer. We're moving it up to good. Pop culture very high. There were so many banger TV shows that dropped in the 90s, like Spongebob, Franklin. Okay, never mind. That's not a banger. And then Dexter's Lab was pretty heat. Rap music started to get really popular in the 90s, but for the products, man, very high, all right? Pokemon. Like, everybody was raving over that shit. The news was saying it was quote-unquote dangerous to the youth to play Pokemon. That shit was going crazy. That was the one thing I remember. And the 90s had so many classic toys like the Rubik's Cube, the Finger Traps, the goddamn Tech Dex. Another banger era to grow up in, 10 out of 10. The 2010s, you were either a late millennial or a Gen Z kid growing up. I mean, there's no way none of you were growing up in the 2010s, unless y'all are like legitimately fetuses. To the cuts holding up, I would say so. Except for this emo ass cut, bro, this has gotta go. Oh my God, please get this off my screen. 2010s, 2000s had some pretty good fits, aside from the Gucci, Louis, Vuitton, Supreme era, that was pretty trash. Other than that, all right, people are for the most part putting that shit on 2010 slang eh, i'd say it fell off all right i'm not gonna hold you on fleek lit and then you also had a lot of tech slang dropping as well so who doesn't use tech slang like seriously like nobody is gonna type out if you know you know unless you're a nerd trying to be grammatically correct i don't know pop culture best pop culture i don't give a shit i don't care like do i gonna sit here and name all these artists celebrities classic movies i know the slang was kind of trash it already aged like shit but look this other stuff makes up for it and if you play any song that was from the 2010s that was playing frequently on the radio it's it's a banger now for products again very high the internet started surging i don't know if that was a mistake or if it was a good thing but uh stay away from the dark corners and the iphone just got the fattest upgrade of all time in the 2010s phones just kept getting better and better throughout the years and for social media it was literally just free reign in the 2010s like people just said shit with no consequence people had the most out-of-pocket tweets on twitter in like 2012 and they wouldn't get quote tweeted and canceled for it 2020s to present day you're either a late gen z kid or a gen alpha kid if you're growing up around this time so cuts we're gonna score it very high i mean everyone is getting faded up now people got the cleanest cuts barbers are basically professionals people take haircuts very serious if your cut gets fucked up you are getting clowned for the remaining time until it grows fashion I'd give it good. I mean, some people got the most ridiculous fits, but the average fit is pretty calm. And I'd say as Gen Z, I think we got shoe game unlocked. Except for the big red boots. Slang, mid. Bro, there's some vile ass words. There's some decent ones. There's some pretty good ones. But you will never catch me saying edging in my whole life. Late Gen Z, early Gen Alpha is selling with the slang, bro. I'm not gonna hold you. Now, any slang words is gonna be used to death and ruined by social media. Pop culture. You know what? I'll say it's decent. I'd say 2021 by far was the best year. New wave of content creators, whole new wave of music. Just so many people on the come up during that time. A lot of it felt really new. Products. Now, the decade isn't over yet, so I'm not gonna say anything. But for Gen Alpha, 
pre-W or pre-L. Nobody in Gen Alpha has entered their prime yet. So now what you've all been waiting for, which is the best generation to live in, in my opinion? Mid-2000s, 2010s. I don't care. That shit solos. And yeah, go watch that video on the end screen. Go watch it. Watch it now. Clout chasing. Why do people do it? I don't know. It's, it's almost like they only care about the number on the screen rather than the quality or the type of content they're putting out there for their <laughs> consumer. At this point, clout is just an extremely, extremely family-friendly substance. And people will do anything just for 15 seconds of virality on TikTok or Instagram, etc. That could potentially, whatever stunt they could do, potentially could ruin their life. And the employer will take one look at this motherfucker and say, yeah, no, we're not hiring you. There's no way a single soul that's an employer out there will hire anyone who previously faked disorders on TikTok. Natalie, yes, right. We've done our social media background check to see who you really are. And Duck and Co. has noticed that you, you fake disorders on TikTok. Wow, you're hired. That's amazing. You really thought you were hired? Get the f*** out of my office. Pigs will be taking flight and shooting lasers out of their eyes before that happens. First, we'll start with the trends. Now, there's there's been so many, way too many to count, of either trends or just stupid videos in general for 15 seconds of fame. Like, for example, this dude. He, he was stepping on fucking Subway food because he wanted Meek Mill to sign him. Like, somehow he's... He, I guess this guy thought he was gonna magically make it out the Subway with this one. Might as well, like, start getting on your hands and knees and just start fucking bowing at that point. Meek Mill's gonna see you destroying a subway and think to himself, oh yeah, let, let's sign this guy. Yeah, totally. And plus, guess what? You don't even get a fan base from this. Why even do it? I get doing like something a bit absurd for content. I don't know. Going to a furry con dressed as an animal control center guy. Now that right there is content. But what is destroying a subway? That What substance that does that even offer? Nothing. Who's gonna look at that and say, you know what? I wanna follow this guy music career not a single soul on this earth zero out of ten terrible strategy once your 15 seconds of fame is up you're irrelevant people who do the most for clout like will literally like practically sell their life away and their dignity will get nowhere like what fan base would you even garner from that next we got people who start up internet beef or drama or that just try to cause a problem like obviously they're doing it for clout attention whatever it is like if you think about any content creator on here let's say mr beast how did mr beast get to the top not by starting beef and drama praying for it to go viral they did it through hard work not through internet beef so why even bother purposefully start Starting these dramas up. For example, we got those gym girls that label men as creeps at the gym for their own gain. Like, bro could literally glance at this girl for like 0.2 seconds and boom. They're trying to squeeze the juice out of like fucking nothing. It looks like a dried up lemon that's just been suffering in the desert. Like, you got nothing there. The cow's udder's all fucking dried up, bro. There's nothing there. But you just look extremely desperate at that point. Like, obviously, no one's gonna rock with you if you just start beef over nothing or like stir the pot almost falsely accuse people of being a creep for example and then there's a bunch of like rapper beef or whatever they write diss tracks on each other there could be like a singular tweet saying this rapper sucks and another rapper could like it and there would just be a whole out fucking war on twitter all of a sudden you just blink and there would just be beef between rappers say uh for for example i faked beef with my own brother birdie like people who know us for our made up beef or whatever i just came up with won't be there for our content they just want to see who's gonna win the beef or whatever yo do you just see the tweet i sent out hey just respond to that and say like my content sucks fucking bird guy like bro's trying to be me for real this is gonna work we're gonna get crazy clout from this Bro, we're gonna convert like crazy. Yeah, I'm on it, I'm on it. I'm blowing up Twitter right now. Duck. Wow, bro, you really think you're him. Hmm, hold on, hold on. Let me think, let me think. Your content is so garbage, it sucks donkey balls. Sincerely, Birdie. Yo, did you send it? Oh my god, bro, this is gonna blow up. What? what zero likes? <laughs> No, the clout. They're just there to watch the beef go down. It's like those school fights. There's people involved and you don't know either of them. You're not going to care within like a day. Like everyone's there pointing, screaming, shouting, oh my God, fight. And a day later, no one cares. The internet moves really fast. And that's why all these people do these like 15 seconds of fame stunts dry up really fast. Next up, we got the leeches. Now, what is a leech exactly? These clout leeches, if you have any sort of bit of clout on social media, they will fucking 
fucking suck that damn thing dry. Or they won't get off the meat stick until the end of humanity in hopes that they get a little bit of clout out of it or something. Like, these are the people that will just talk to you for the sole purpose of clout, and it's honestly just goofy. This is, this is the type of person that just hates on the come up, and then as soon as they see you going up, they switch up. Oh, so, uh, duck. Heard about your YouTube channel, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just posted my first video. You sauce me up with the subscribe? Bro, your content's so ass. Like, what the fuck is this? It's the duck? Like, bro, you have one sub. It's probably your mom, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably his mom, dude. Many months later. Yo, I know I haven't talked to you in nine months, bro, but... Oh my god, your channel exploded. Holy shit. Yo, I, like, love your videos. Like, your videos are amazing, bro. Uh... Thanks. Yo, I just started one. Can you show me? You will see these leeches hopping from friend group to friend group just because some person has a bit more clout than the other. And you already know, you'll see the leeches like begging people for a follow back. Literally anyone remotely famous, if you were to call it that. All right, whoever's got the most followers that they know, they're going to be like begging them for a follow back. You know, I love doing YouTube. Like, I re I'm really grateful for all of your support. Thank you for 100k. I love the job. I'm happy I can make stupid cartoons for a living. It's a blessing, and then when I meet the leeches IRL, it can definitely be a curse. I've been to my fair share of parties. Some people I've been to a party with, I've never even fucking met before. They don't even want to know my name. They want to know if I'm the famous guy or if I'm not the famous guy. Yeah, there's just some people that are just insanely over the top about like a huge following or clout or whatever it is. Even if it's like social clout, like in school or whatever, like if you're you're at the, like the top of the social pyramid per se, if you want to call it that. There's people that are, you know, that, that just follow the dude around like a fucking lost dog so they can get closer to peaking in high school per se it's kind of like the same thing they're just social climbers they see your popularity and they think they're they're gonna become popular by hanging out with you next we got trolls now it's kind of a slippery slope with trolls because there's some trolls that know what they're doing and there's some that don't and what these trolls will do is they'll you know they'll bait people into hating on their video so they get more engagement for example like the vegan teacher like she's out here doing like the most devious shit for clout obviously it's all a character and it's an act, bro. There's no way some old lady is acting like this over some goddamn veganism. There's some trolls that are successful with it and then there's some that aren't and there's some that just like fall off. If trolling's your whole gimmick, it's kind of tough to stay on to begin with because you, you gotta run out of steam at some point if the gimmick gets old. Like vegan teacher, for example. She calls out creators and says they're terrible people for not being vegan. Like no one, you're not gonna convert anyone by doing that. But if you make like some goofy ass cartoon music music like you know miles then maybe you will convert people so for being a troll it really depends on what you're doing like look what happened to meowba or some shit like like it's been like 30 years since i've heard that name she tried to get a little career off this account and it didn't work like you're screwed if your audience hates you like you're primary audience like why would you even do that like that just wouldn't make sense to make that like the kickstart of your career like everyone following you hates your guts so y you're screwed anyways i got a spotify if you want to listen to these on the go linked in the description and if you did enjoy this video click on this one right here on the end screen watch it right now types of intrusive thoughts and i already know some of you are already behind your screen right there acting like you're a saint oh i've never had an intrusive thought <laughs> Yes, you have. You gotta at least have one that you recall. And if you don't, you're just simply not human. And now an intrusive thought is any disturbing thought. It may be a violent one. It could be an embarrassing one. And you usually will not act on these thoughts unless you let the intrusive thoughts win. And you just feel the temptation to do it, but you just don't do it. Because, well, reputation and consequences kick in. And well, that brings me to the first type, embarrassing. embarrassing. Whether it's to blurt out some I'll dumb shit in class or get on the McDonald's counter and just start doing some goofy dance. I'm not the most out there person in the world, but damn, this time, the intrusive thoughts won. I don't know, you could be the judge of that. And we were doing a normal round trip of groceries. We get everything, get it in the carriage. Now, I've always gotten the sudden urge to just ride a carriage like a fucking scooter, get some momentum on the ground with my leg, and just push the carriage super fast. And I caved. I just started whipping that hoe in the middle of Target. I got so many weird looks, but it was fucking worth it. Now, this isn't the most embarrassing thing in the world, but it was recent. I mean, I'm not a grown grown ass man but we're getting there if there were any baddies in that target watching me well chances are done all right it's over who's gonna get turned on by some motherfucker zooming in a carriage like a goddamn razor scooter no nothing terrible but just something really dumb and if any work
co-worker saw me, I definitely would have got kicked out for sure. Then we exited the facility. I was about across the street. Our car stopped right in front of me. And you know what I did? I started whipping in front of him. I just started pushing that John in the parking lot. I had way more room. But guess what? I got to the car efficiently because I was whipping. Type number two, destruction. Now, I don't know if you guys have gotten this thought plenty of times, but whenever I see wired earbuds, game over. My brain suddenly just gets the temptation to play cut the rope real quick. When wired earbuds were way more relevant, all right, this thought haunted me. I wanted to figure out what happened. Even though the ending answer is so obvious, I'm gonna end up with black eyes and bruises and the earbuds will no longer work. But I still have the temptation to do it, which is so weird. Now, this was my first ever destructive, intrusive thought. Now, y'all are gonna think I'm a menace, bro. This is crazy shit. But I remember seeing a picture on the counter and then I just draw over it and rip it up. I don't know why the fuck I did it, but I did it. Like if an interviewer came up to me and said, Okay, Ducko, why did you do that, huh? Uh, I don't know. And to this day, I still don't know why I did it. The intrusive thoughts won. That's the only answer I could come up with. Type number three, injury. Now this one, you don't act on it because well, you know, you don't wanna be in the hospital bed. But the amount of times I thought of taking the risk was crazy. What if I just booted up a game of Crossy Road IRL real quick? I'd just be on the third story of the mall sometimes. I would just look down and be like, what if I just fucking plummet down there like I'm a goddamn superhero, land with my fist on the ground. Boom! I just dive in like a goddamn superhero and, well, break my entire body. Then after I get that thought, I just get like a weird butterfly feeling after, like, ugh, why the fuck did I even think about that? Just thinking about how far down the first floor is from, like, floor number four or something. I don't know. Like, it's weird how my brain's trying to sabotage me, bro. Like, what, what did I do? Number four. Violent. We about to get canceled with this one. Now, there's not really very many people that I despise on this earth. But if I end up running into one and we have to, we're like forced to like be in the same vicinity and he just starts pissing me off, like he just gives me that vibe where you want to just like have him shut up. I may look collected on the outside, but oof, not so much on the inside. Bro, are you going to let that slide? Duck, what, what are we doing here? Come on, show this guy who's boss. Bro, we can't do that. I'm not going to risk another ass whooping. What the hell, man? Hit that motherfucker with the Will Smith combo. What, to beat up the kid that's going to peak in high school? Hell nah. Not worth it, bro. My brain was ready to fucking get in the ring like Mike Tyson with this motherfucker. Like, bro, these thoughts are making me feel like I need to be into, like, some sort of anger management class. Okay, buddy. What is this on the piece of paper? A teddy bear? Yes, a happy teddy bear. Man, fuck your teddy bear! <laughs> Uh, your duck, your happy place, your happy place. No, don't worry about Mr. Suckles, no! But yeah, I'm not alone on that, guys, right? Right, guys? Uh, guys? The amount of times I just caught Birdie just staring into the fucking abyss and I wanted to just push him into the pool was way too many. He might try to get it back in blood now. Oh, fuck. I gotta keep my eyes peeled if I'm around the pool. Now, me and Birdie would never fight. But this one time, shit got a bit violent. All right, let me set the scene. We were playing Mario Bros. Wii. We were in, like, second grade. Mind you, there's a little rage building up. And I get the thought to, you know, really practice, hone in on those baseball skills and throw the Wii remote as hard as I can at the couch. And... I hit my brother in the tooth with the Wii remote, and that shit fell out. And of course, I got fucking wailed on, bro. It was over. Pause, pause, pause. And I got my ass beat because, yeah, I decided to chuck the Wii remote violently at the fucking couch like a dumbass. What do you think? There'd be a happy ending? F no. And that's the day I learned about the consequences of intrusive thoughts. Do not violently rage and chuck a Wii remote as hard as you can on a couch, or else you'll knock your brother's tooth out. Yeah, violent intrusive thoughts were interesting, bro. I've had plenty more that would probably get me canceled. Mom, I wanted the green one. What the f Going back into your store, give me a green one. Shut the fuck up. Yo, you know what I was thinking? Bro, I'm feeling like messy right now. Why? Because I want to punt the fuck out of that child. Bro, I was thinking the same thing. Me too. That is uh, not based on a true story. I think it's just time to move on. Type number five, roasting. Somebody could just be minding their own business, doing a little walk in the park type shit. And I'd be like, huh, bro, looks like that critic from Ratatouille. And why the hell is bro stepping like that? He, he is not big stepping. Bro's doing that little cartoon tippy toe walk. What the hell is he doing? I don't know if anyone can relate to me on this one or if I need to be sent to the mental asylum again. But I just straight up be roasting people on my head. Like, for example, I'm mid-conversation. 
I'm talking to someone and they got yellow teeth or something. And as I'm talking to this person, my brain's really locked in on the fact that Nielsen's got yellow teeth and it just won't go away. And I just continue the conversation like nothing happened, bro. What the fuck is wrong with me? I'm glad I didn't say any of this out loud because I would have had a ton of black eyes and bruises. And these thoughts will not go away. Like now all I can think about is if I'm talking to someone and they got yellow ass teeth like Nielsen, that's all I'm going to think about. That's all I'm going to fixate on. It. Type number six, paranoia. I get the most irrational paranoid thoughts ever i'm like trying to sniff out goddamn crime like i'm sherlock holmes out here sometimes i completely miss the mark or i'm just being extremely dramatic ah fuck oh this dude's like six five. Oh shit uh, oh he just looked at me fuck fuck oh he's got a biker jacket fuck him and his biker gang are gonna jump me it's over like i was i was out here praying to the lord in my fucking mind but on the outside i seemed calm cool and collected but on the inside my brain was looking like that one episode from spongebob it was having a nick avocado mental breakdown real quick also 12 got me paranoid the unknown has got me paranoid like bro when i when there's like a policeman around bro it's like my brain is like fucking spectating myself and i'm like so self-conscious my brain acts like if i take a step i'm going to jail all right he's right there don't fuck this up all right you're get on the fucking ground buddy you took too far of a stride buddy you're going to jail when cops are around Forget it, bro. I'm just quaking in my boots. Even if I did absolutely nothing at all, doesn't matter. Like, my brain always thinks of that 0.1% chance that something bad will happen. Type number seven, flashbacks. These are terrible. Tell me not. You're just sitting there, existing, and then you just fucking zone out. And just think back of a stupid, embarrassing, or bad time within your life. And yeah, your brain will just fixate on it for like 10 minutes, and it will just live in your head rent-free. But I'd be looking like the biggest bot for like 5 minutes or however long it is. Because I'm thinking about that one time I ripped my pants at work, and how everyone stared at me when it went... Yeah, that's a story for another day. Yeah, I don't know if we, I want to get too far into detail with that one. But yeah, it was embarrassing to say the least. But I just remember one time I just thought about it for like 10 minutes. That shit just hinders your focus, bro. Like, then I'm just like completely locked out at that point. I am not locked in. Type number eight, doubt. These thoughts can be motivating, but... If you don't actually do said task, well, uh, you're a bitch. If I, like, strike out at the mound or something, don't catch a football. If I quit doing push-ups, come on, give me one more. Up For your moms, do one more for your moms. Not for your dad. Not for every entire family member in the Duckalo bloodline. Let's get it. You don't want to be a pussy, do you? Yeah, I'd just be thinking to myself, like, something along the lines of this. Like, if I don't do this, I'm a pussy or whatever it is. But this one, you know what, I'm gonna be honest, it gets me cooking. And at type number nine, we got superstitions. Whatever superstitions you may have, like, your brain will just gaslight you into thinking anything is bad luck. Even if you, like, wake up an hour later than usual. Oh, it's bad luck, oh my god. But yeah, no matter how much your brain tries to gaslight you into thinking that, don't. Number 10, curiosity. If you're having curious, intrusive thoughts, it's usually for something bad. And this one time, I couldn't stop thinking about the green G. Now, if you're old enough not to know what the green G is, well, good. Uh, you shouldn't know what it is. And at this party I was at, there was a steamrolled green G going around. I just got the thoughts wondering what it was like to be on Mars. So I got my spaceship and I flew to Mars. And I did it. I took like mad hits of the green rolled G. And I guess, yeah, I'm no longer curious. All right, well, intrusive thoughts. Don't K to them, unless you want to whip in a shopping cart. If you enjoyed this video, go watch the playlist. If you don't, y you'll get bad luck. Come on now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm playing, but go watch the playlist if you enjoyed. Bye. Types of guys around girls. This is going to be a fun video. We all know guys just have different personalities around girls. There's good ones, and there's just absolutely terrible ones. And then there's some that are just straight up annoying. Like, like bro, she's not going to... You. Shout out the boy KD for the video idea and let's get into the types of guys around girls So I think it's appropriate to start off the video with the try hard This dude will just try so hard to get any spare cooch in the area This is that one kid that swears he's gonna get all the action Does he end up getting it? No, because he tries too hard He'll have a whole list of girls on like every social media And guess what this dude's doing 24-7? Guess Texting all of them He's trying to spit game to all of them at once That's like his entire day and his, his entire life purpose is to just get some pussy. Next up, we got we, this. This isn't a video without where the 
laughed at. This is probably one of mo the most infamous quotes of how guys act around girls. They'll they'll talk all their shit like, oh, you know, uh, guys, you know, this, this party would be lit with the girls. And when they actually show up to the function, guess what bro's doing? Bro's checking the weather in Santa Clara. Like, why do you care at this moment in time? Because bro's shitting himself and he doesn't know what to do. So he, he's got to look busy. So he's, uh, he's looking at the weather, guys. Don't talk all this shit if you're not going to back yourself up. Yo, Bobby, Bobby, come on, man. What, what is this party? You know what would make tonight a movie if the were here? Just for you, Jared, you know what? I I'm going to call up the girl. One hour later. Bro, what happened? You were the one that wanted the girls there. Uh, 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 uh. And he's got no answer. No explanation for that disgusting behavior. How are you going to talk all that shit and then log into your Clash of Clans base when the girls are at the party? Next up, we got the Alpha. Now, this dude is just absolutely annoying. This is the guy that's like gobbling Andrew Tate's meat. Like, it's crazy how much of the meat stick is in his mouth. Bro is just extremely toxic. And you wonder why you attract garbage. Being overly nice and overly toxic is just not if you label yourself as an alpha male, like, nah, you, you cringe, bro, I don't care. Like, oh, guys, I'm an alpha male, actually. I drive a Bugatti like my daddy Andrew. Like, shut the fuck. We all know you're you're whipping around in the Ford Focus. Like, you gotta, you don't gotta say none. Because we already know you're watching Andrew Tate with the zestiest pose of all time swing your feet back and, back and forth. Anyways, it, it's usually people who act alpha around girls. They usually just do it around the girls, and that's it. And even some people will make their voice deeper. Yeah, the voice deeper guy's on this list. Like, these motherfuckers will, in an instant, sound like Corpse Husband. Like, bro, I know I sound like a 12-year-old, but watch, I can do it. So, babe, what's going on? Um, are you okay? You sound sick. Okay, I can't do a girl voice for the life of me. No, this is, this is my voice. Um, it's just really deep for some reason, so, uh, wanna fuck? But she's not gonna get in the bedroom with you because you have a deeper voice. Especially if you're faking it. Like, I don't know, I don't know how girls' attraction to voices work, but goddamn. I don't think faking your voice will get you very far. Then you got the roughhouser. Now, this kid, oh my god. When you're getting some action, when, when you're risen up, like, literally, you're taking the biggest W on the planet, and then this kid pulls up and does something like this you know i really think you're really cool jessica hey, oh my god oh, oh. what's, what's... Oh, he's getting the ladies over here hey, man can you can you can you not touch me and the vibes killed just like that it's over whatever plan you were making with jessica it, it's just done it's over thanks to jared your mojo's gone like it's it just poof because he's praying on your downfall like mojo jojo like it's crazy next up we got the main character now bro does not need an introduction we all know this dude is full of himself bro thinks he's living in a movie and bro is just the lead role so he will try and get all the girls attention and just start acting like an absolute clown even if someone's cooking up like bro they're in their element they're in the zone the main character will try to steal their attention or what is what i like to call block probably gonna have to censor that but like this dude is so full of himself that he will just interrupt conversations because he thinks he's so important than that other guy that she's talking to that he will just try to steal the show from them he is like the biggest op then you got the guy that switches up we we all know of somebody like this this dude will completely change his personality around girls bro putting on a crazy facade and these people are usually the types of people that will go to extreme lengths and impress girls like they that will go way too far. That's why they're even putting on the facade in the first place. Because they don't got the confidence in their own personality. So they put on this fake one. And they just completely switch up. And something else that they would do is clown you to make themselves look funny. You will be the caboose, the ass crack of the joke. Yup, so there's this restaurant that's like five stars. Everyone's saying it's gas. I think we should go sometime. Bro, why are you standing like that? Bro's got that SpongeBob walk though. We, 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 we. So, ladies, ladies. You should have seen this guy the other day. He was the biggest NPC ever. He skipped out on the party the other night. Like, bro, that's some, like, chat GPT type shit. Clowning your homies isn't gonna get you laid, bro. Like, I, I hope you know that. Like, and this kid, he, he will make that, like, the center of the conversation. It's just clowning you the whole time. And, of course, that's just gonna get extremely annoying when you can't even talk about other
other things. Next up, we got the show off. Now, this kid will do any stupid trick or stunt, etc., for some play. Like, he, he's just showing off to the girls. And this is like a very common thing. Like, people do dumb shit in front of their crush all the time. He'll go for like some crazy basketball trick shot and he'll end up slipping because he's too busy focusing on what his crush is thinking. He, he's gonna be like eating pavement the way he's focused on impressing his crush with this crazy basketball shot of his. Next up, we got the simp. We can't forget the simp, bro. Oh my god, this dude. He was in the Types of Friends video. Same thing applies. He will ditch the boys for his girl, all right? He will just dip after like an hour be like, oh yeah, I gotta go see my girl. Like, bro, no you don't. Usually his riz consists of just being desperate Hello, madam. I think you look very beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna put all your drinks on my tab. Bartender, bartender! Yes? Put all her drinks on my tab. I got it. It's on the house tonight. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, of course. Anything for this lovely lady. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, but the craziest thing is, she doesn't even know the guy. That's the craziest part of all this. Like, this dude will go to extreme lengths. He will just be overly nice to the point where it's just a turnoff, bro. Like, we get it, bro. You're trying to get a crumb. But it's not gonna work. Because it just comes off as desperate and fake. Next up, in contrary, we got the Rizzler. Bro just magically pulls. We all know the deal by now. Like, bro has the craziest charisma in the book, and he gets girls. Because he's himself. He doesn't have to put on this fake facade for nobody. Next up, we have the deep guy. Now, this guy will just turn anything into a deep conversation. We all know that one guy that just tries to be deep in front of the girls. It's like some depressed PFP Bart Simpson type shit. So like, yo, do you, you see that star right there? That It looks like a teardrop. Isn't that so cool? Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I saw that star. You know, it reminds me of this one time where same exact night, but instead of being with you, staring deep into your eyes, I was fighting some serious demons in my mind. Oh shit, on second thought, I gotta leave early tonight yeah my bad i forgot bro no one wants to hear about you fighting your goddamn demons <laughs> like holy shit this is like the don't hit me up kid in real life except yeah he actually somehow has female interaction now because apparently bro is fighting his demons i don't know bro <laughs> Then you got the nervous kid. Now, this one used to be me, like, 100%. The nerves just took over when I was talking to a girl. Like, it was bad. If this is you right now, it's because you're taking it too serious. Like, you gotta, you gotta loosen up a little bit. Show her you. Like, if she don't like you, then you know what? That's fine. There's plenty fish in the sea. Yeah, I'm low-key still kind of the nervous kid, but we're getting there. Next up, you got the guy who just comes off as extremely creepy. Ugh. You do not want to be this guy, bro. Oh my god. It will just, it, it's just a complete turn off, bro. You got that, if you got that SH Riz, if you got that sexual charisma, if you feel me, if you catch my drift, you're just not gonna succeed. Ah, oh, I got it. Oh, great idea. Oh, this is Riz. Oh, I can't wait to hold you and snuggle you tonight when we're watching Netflix together in my room. Tee hee. Motherfuckers will straight up send shit like that and act like they're they're the Rizzler. That is just straight up creepy, bro. Like, oh my god, bro. You're probably wondering right now, Duck, what type are you? Like, I mean, you're, you're talking shit about all these other people, and yet you're not gonna say what type you are. Which one are? What? Which one is it? Huh, buddy? I uh, about that. Well, you see, um, I'm the no bitch puberty. Yikes. Probably the most awkward time of someone's life. Now, whether you're going through the struggle right now or if you've been through it, we all got to come to a consensus and agree that these were the worst things about puberty. And today, I'm going to put everything I talk about on a chart based on how shit it was. And this, for everybody, was probably the most awkward time in their life. And I remember watching an Odd Ones Out video. I don't know what it was about, but it was about being in seventh grade and being awkward. But I, I was thinking to myself, as I was in seventh grade, I won't be that bad, right, guys? Right? And seven years later, tragic no new paddock. It was awful. So we'll start with my personal struggle during puberty. Voice cracks. I struggle with this one to this day. I still be voice cracking. It's just so awkward. And it just sells your bag. If you're talking to a girl and you voice crack, you're not going to sound too confident, are you? Hey, shawty. Uh, voice crack, my bad. You want to go to my place later? Like, come on. It's raps. Like, that had to at least demote your confidence. A little bit. At least. We'll throw voice cracks in tragic. And everyone points it out, believe me. It is not hard to miss because the decibels are so high. Now, coming in at number two, we got acne. Yeah, my acne was horrendous because of 
football. My chin, my cheeks, my forehead <laughs> covered. My sweat glands were going dummy. I was legitimately the pizza face kid. And surprisingly, I didn't get bullied for my pizza face because, well, everyone else had one as well. So it was all good. Well, for me at least. I don't know. My personal experience, I didn't get bullied for this. But if you're a late bloomer and you come across a dickhead, you might. So for this one, we'll give it, we'll throw it on like the unfortunate level. Now something that may or may not have been a part of your puberty is braces. Braces were awful. I, I had to get this palette expander thing which expanded my jaw and I buck teeth for two months and then I had to get braces. I looked like a redneck down in Texas holding the shotgun with my buck teeth. Awful. I'm gonna get the picture. Look at this. And the braces hurt every single day and I had to avoid certain foods. Well, I, I did them anyway, but still. It just made eating ten times worse. For this one, we'll put it in horrendous because I only had to wear them for a year and a half. If I had to wear them longer, it definitely would be on the atrocious level. Awkwardness. I don't know, man. Just something about it. I just had very low confidence when I was going through puberty. The amount of insecurities I had was through the roof, so of course I was gonna be hella awkward. And oh, believe me, I did not approach a single girl during my acne phase. And I was just so awkward. I had zero confidence in my brace face, pizza face, a scrawny build smaller than my face. Yeah, it was just, it was just rough. The list of insecurities goes on. I couldn't speak to a single girl without folding like a MacBook Air. It's going on the atrocious level. If I did approach a girl, it would've went something like, oh, well, uh, hey, shot. Uh, do, you, do you have Snapchat? Uh, no. Oh, uh, good heavens. Uh, sorry for bothering you. The awkwardness was just seeping through my blood. I just couldn't escape it. Next, we gotta talk about smelling bad. It's probably one of the first things that happens to you as soon as you hit puberty. If you don't wash, shower, bathe, whatever, you will smell like fucking shit. It is very important not to be musty. Body odor is a whole different breed, bro. You do not want to fucking smell that shit. But for the duck viewers, we shower. We put on deodorant brush our teeth, all that good stuff. We do basic hygiene. So this one won't be a problem for any of the duck viewers, right? So we're gonna have to put in an eh, manageable. It's not bad. Unless you don't shower, then uh, probably atrocious. Next, we got health class. Now, health class was just a fucking nightmare. Just those years you were going through puberty, peak puberty years, it sucked. And so did the goddamn video we had to watch before hitting puberty. Like, why do I have to go through torture twice? And then the health teacher would be over there like, oh, you guys are going through some changes. Is. Acting like it's all fucking sunshine and rainbows. Like, hell, like that shit should not be sugar coated, bro. And she's like, all right, guys, it's time for a movie. And we all knew what we were in for. It was one of the most traumatizing days of my child life. But yeah, I guarantee you, literally everyone has watched that. Like, it's literally mandated by law that schools need to show this shit. So we're gonna have to give it the trash level. It just sucks and you can't avoid it, so it's trash. Stubbles. Now, the girls can't really relate to this one. Stubbles on your face, bro. Beard starts coming in. And it looks like shit! Like, you might as well shave that shit off, bro, because you are not growing in a beard. You do not have the testosterone yet to grow in a beard unless you have some crazy ass genetics. In my school, there were some kids that had full on beards in eighth grade and I still can't fucking grow one. And I still have the fucking stubble stash. It's basically like, let's say you place a turd on your upper lip and it's kind of, you kind of like lower the opacity. That's what it's like to have a fucking stubble stash. And if you go to shave it as you're watching this video, do not move the razor in any other direction except down. But the stubble stash, it's dog shit. It's going in dog shit tier. Now this next one, Again, the girls can't relate to. How the fuck do I introduce this one without sounding weird? Have you ever just been bricked in the middle of class for no reason? If you're presenting in front of the class and it just happens, like, that is probably gonna be the most embarrassing moment in someone's life. Random boners is going above atrocious. Holy fuck, it sucked. Best comeback if someone's like, Oh, you're bricked up. <laughs> then just say, just say, why are you looking down there, weirdo? Huh? You're fucking weird, weirdo. But yeah, if someone points that out, there, it's a fucking loser. The sweatshirt clutched the fuck up for this, though. I'm not gonna hold you. Think about, like, some shriveled grandma tits, and it'll go away. It'll put that shit into reverse. Okay, this is the most out-of-pocket video I've ever made. Mood swings. That's another thing that comes with puberty. With the crazy dosage of hormones hitting your body, of course you're gonna have crazy mood swings. Your hormone levels are just all over the fucking place. Like, the rage was... Oh my god, the rage was crazy on the video game. But I would just meditate. If I was, like, punching the fucking air or some shit, I would just meditate... Like like a goddamn monk.
bunk and just fucking take deep breaths and just clear my mind. That's basically what I would do. There's plenty of meditation videos on YouTube and they will tell you what to do in the video. So it's, it's hella clutch. Sometimes the rage got a little out of hand on Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege because there were so many fucking sweats on the game. So we'll give it manageable. It was pretty manageable. Apart from video games, I didn't really have much mood swings. And if whatever I felt like I was going to go insane, I just fucking meditated. Or I went to the gym. Late bloomers. <sighs> You poor soul. I may or may not be there with you. I I'm questioning whether I was a late bloomer or not. Some shit happened really late for me, bro. Like, I I'm talking like sophomore to early junior year on that. And then some stuff happened like early as fuck, like sixth grade. I don't even know if that's fucking normal or not. But I have a pretty high-pitched voice, as if you couldn't tell already. But here was my voice like three and a half years ago. And at this point in my life, I was about 16 and a half. To learn, I was excited. I was ecstatic to know what I had to learn and then you just- Yo, I'm falling in my chair. Bro, what? I'm falling out of my goddamn chair how light my fucking voice was three and a half years ago. Jesus Christ. I don't even know what happened. I couldn't fucking tell you. Because I already know a 16 year old should not be sounding like that. I was like ecstatic. Like, I, I sound like I was fucking 12. Someone must have fucking knocked me right in the nuts before recording. But this one, late bloomers get made fun of for being squeakers, them being short as fuck. So, we're gonna have to give it atrocious. Next, we got growth spurts. Now, a question on some people's mind may be, are growth spurts painful? And according to zero signs whatsoever, and some dumbass in his room, no. And from personal experience, and I looked it up, answer is still no. But I do remember this one time in like sixth grade where I was like walking with a limp. I had to go to the nurse's office because it, it would, my leg just hurt that bad. But I don't think that had anything to do with it. Maybe it did, who even knows? But this one, it's going below eh, because... Who doesn't want to get taller? Like, fuck yeah. Unless you're like seven foot and you already can't fit through doorways. But other than that, it's fire. Then we got my you have changed or I remember you when you were a little baby like oh my god every fucking family function with like extended extended family I'm talking and every time I saw them even if it's been like a year or something they'll be like holy shit what the fuck are you feeding this kid huh yeah this kid's growing like a fucking weed pretty soon he's gonna be able to paint the ceiling ah 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 yeah I'm getting up there yeah I'm not doing the surfer spongebob voice absolutely not they would always rave about how fast I'm growing. I mean, I was like 5'10 in like junior year. That's still, that was like pretty fucking short compared to other people. I'm currently like six feet. I, I know I sound like I'm a short, fat, stout motherfucker. Like, I don't know what's good with my vocal cords, but I swear I'm six feet. And then I always say like, hey, what's in the water? Like, come on. You at least have heard one of those things. For that, we'll just put it in below trash and in between manageable. Because, well, you're probably sick of it at this point and you already know it's gonna happen. And it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, the worst things could get brought up. Like, hey, you got a girlfriend yet? Next, this one doesn't really have to do with your body per se, but the clothes you buy. Growing out of your clothes sucks. You got a brand new favorite t-shirt that you got? Too bad. You grew out of it in like fucking two months. I went from a youth large to an adult medium in a fucking year, bro. Please tell me how that's possible. But I kind of was a fat ass in grade five. From grade six to eight, I kind of just stayed at that adult medium range. So I was, I was, I was chilling. I actually didn't really deal with this one too much. But I'm sure you guys had to get hand-me-downs or whatever the fuck it was. So this one we'll put in unfortunate because hand-me-downs suck because you're not choosing what you're wearing, bro. You're kind of just hoping for a good shirt with good RNG or some shit. Next, we got to talk about the worst one out of all of them. You sleep a solid eight to nine hours. You have a pretty good sleep. Then you wake up and there's a fucking puddle in your pants. Wet dreams. I probably can't say that too loudly. But I don't think anything else needs to be said about this one. It is going the fuck on the atrocious level. Your new pair of boxers that you just got for Christmas got fucking ruined by all the school bus of children that just got released into your pants. And then you just feel tired as fuck when you wake up. Even though you slept like nine hours. It sucks. Go watch that playlist. Go watch it right now. Hurry the fuck up. Go, what are you doing? The seven levels of gaming addiction. And now we've all played a video game before in our lifetime, unless your parents were just ops. Unless you really hated them. So we all fall on this spectrum somewhere, and I'm sure you'll find out where you are throughout this video. So here we go, the seven levels of gaming addiction. We'll start with level zero, the friend's house gamer. Now this kid, pretty self-explanatory, he would go to friend's house and play video games, that's it. You don't own a console at this level, and you just 
play whenever you're offered. And it's never at your own house. It's literally impossible to get addicted because you don't even have a console or you don't even play. Now, once you try it out at your friend's house or whatever situation it may be, you play the game for the first time and then you decide, you know what? I'm going to invest in a console. You are now at level one. Noob slash carefree. Now, I fucking lie at this level right here, bro. I used to be, I used to be way up there, like level five, which you'll see later. But now I'd say I'm a level one. I would just play whatever console it was whenever I felt like it, which isn't really often. My first time playing was a completely different experience than it is now. I remember the very first day I was introduced to a console. So I, we got the Wii for my dad's birthday. This was not for my birthday. And of course, I was really confused as to what it was at first. But the fact that you could choose what you do in the game, to my little Timmy mind, that was so amazing. But in reality, yeah, no shit. You can do whatever you want with your time. But apparently, it was like endless opportunities in Mario Kart Wii for me. And once I unlocked Diddy Kong, nope. All right, goodbye. I fell in love with playing video games. Like, me and my Wii, like, the, the Wii was my fucking wifey, and we were about to get married and have a ceremonial-ass wedding. Okay, anyway, I'm getting off topic. But once you play on, like, a sort of schedule, like, you start to play, I don't know, let's say, like, an hour or two hours, you are now on level two. You get on with the homies fairly consistently, and now you spend a bit of time playing. It could range from, like, an hour to two hours, like I said. If the game has a huge skill gap, well, you're not gonna be good at it yet. You're not gonna be an absolute nerd at the fucking game or whatever it is you know you're pretty content with where you are in skill level and you don't really care to improve which honestly you know it's probably better or else you will fall into the trap of level three you start to get a little bit competitive at the game it's nice to be competitive in situations you know you're just gonna be a bum and get nowhere in life if you're not and this stage you want to get to the top you want to beat the game you want to get to a high rank you have the goal in mind to catch them all in fucking pokemon whatever it is because there's something about it just gives you dopamine just getting these accomplishments in the video game which honestly was now looking back is kind of weird you know i thought i'd get dopamine from accomplishing things like in real life but i guess to me as a little timmy it was all about the game collecting them pokemon try to unlock all the characters in mario kart which is when you start to play like two to three hours a day now i don't know the recommended amount or whatever it is but i would not recommend passing this level me personally because some people at this level begin to rage especially when you get really attached to a certain game you'll start to rage at it more. Oh, no. Fuck! Every time I died in Mario Bros. Wii, I would just plunge onto the couch and just start kicking my feet in the air, bro. I don't know. It was really harmless rage. But now we go on to level four which is where the toxicity begins. This is where people, some people, begin to start raging. Now, if the game is a giant skill gap, it's like fucking huge. They're gonna grind, they're gonna be on that John for like a while, and they're still gonna suck. And they're gonna suck because, well, it's a huge learning curve, and they, I'm sure, they're determined to get better at the game, so they're gonna get mad. And they're gonna keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Fuck, I blew to elixir again. Fuck. Oh, no, please, 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 no, 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 don't get the tower, no, and of course, yeah, this guy's, oh, wow, what a loser, this, dude, this kid's doing his little, hee, 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 ha, thinking he's all that in a fucking bag of chips because he won a game of Clash Royale, dude, who the hell are you screaming at, uh, I don't know. But when I started to care so much about a video game, just the rage would just begin to build up more and more. And if you have like a competitive nature like I did with the game, like you want to be the best. So some people are just going to get bad and I, I happen to be one of them. Now there were other games like shooter games. Now these set me off the fucking edge, bro. Oof. Although them John said rated M, yeah, I was not fucking mature enough to play them, Jonathan. So let me tell you, because at level five, you begin to become very competitive at a game. And this may cause some rage, a lot of rage, especially those bad days where you're playing like shit. At this level, if you're not cooking at like every second of the game, it's a big deal. Now, I was heavily addicted to a few games in my time, like Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege. It was bad, so bad. You know, all I would think about was Rainbow Six Six Siege and getting my rank up or Fortnite and getting the W's or whatever it was. Those two games I specifically remember because it was my freshman year. And this for me was probably peak video 
game addiction. And now I was getting close to like streamer hours on the game. It was getting bad. Even though I was making no funds. None. I was doing this shit for free, bro. I guess I wanted to be like the best out of my friend group. I don't even know. Like I, oh, I just wanted to be the best. Like no one ever was. At this stage, I wanted to be like the talk of the friend group. I don't know because we would all be squatting up or whatever it was playing duos. Maybe I wanted to get a high rank for bragging rights or something like, yeah, guys, I'm a platinum in rainbow or whatever. Oh, I got a 70 kill win. We would all try to one up each other on the game basically that that's how it would go well for the ones who are competitive so if you had a competitive team if you were like playing a team game they will get on your head if you're doing ass which will just create even more rage and toxicity uh where's the bomb what did you say i can't hear you down there on the bottom of the leaderboard what are you doing down there get some fucking kills buddy you ain't doing shit for this team i'll tell you where the bomb is if you get a kill competitive team games are crazy bro i'm not gonna lie if your team composure gets fucked up like g fucking g bro you're screwed it's just gonna be rage central in that John. No one's gonna be have like that right mindset. Nothing's gonna happen now on level six We have the professional this motherfucker either is a professional making the bread which you know what I fucking respect that W grind set that is pretty cool that you can make video games and make money in this economy That's pretty fire, but if for that one motherfucker with TTV in your goddamn name knowing damn well You don't stream on twitch who the fuck are you? And every time we kill them, we would check to see if they were actually a streamer. And see if they're like an actual active streamer. And if they were, oh, you bet we would troll them. And now there's this other thing that we would all laugh about. Which is why I never got past level 5. Was because there, there was this thing that Ninja did with like gaming stretches. Energy drinks and all this other shit. And I promised myself... I will never stretch before a fucking video game. And I'm glad I didn't. I'm, and I'm glad I never drink G Fuel to enhance my reaction time by like 0 .02 seconds. Because it's got a fuck ton of caffeine in it. That shit will give me the jitters. And yeah, level 6, you'll start to drink caffeinated drinks to enhance performance. Gaming stretches. Because one, it's your job. Or two, you're a wannabe that doesn't even grind. Like, how can you even expect to blow up if you're not even streaming or posting videos, whatever. It's like, you gotta be consistent, bro. Just fucking around playing the game isn't gonna do shit for you. Now for content creators, this is where they stop because well, they have a life. And this is where most people should stop if they've even gotten to this point. And now we're at level seven and this isn't where it stops. This is not the max. There is a level infinity, but at level seven, this is where gaming begins to get in the way of life. All right, this is no longer a hobby. This is your fucking life. Now, you were slowly spending more and more time as the levels went on, but now it's your entire life. When you start to miss important things for the game, or your whole day revolves around the game. And if you even do go outside, you will be repping the gaming merch. I pause my game to be here? Huh? He's putting that shit on. Look at Sheldon. He's dripping. Yeah, they will have some fit on like this. And this is where the Discord moderator timing begins. They start to gain a fair amount of weight and the pudge, they start to get some pudge in their life. And then they begin to neglect no. hygiene and all this other no. stuff for the game so they get the maximum amount of time possible. They just throw self-care out of the window at this point. They put the game over themselves at this point. Poor sleep, poor hygiene, poor self-care at this level. But at level infinity, it gets far worse. Now this level, I'm gonna refer to as the Sam level or the Eric Cartman level. Now these are two characters from TV shows I, I used to watch. I still watch South Park. But Total Drama was a classic. Now this motherfucker Sam had a DS everywhere he went. He had that shit on him 24 7 some motherfucker could have been getting eaten by a bear next to him bro will still be playing his video game bro and there was even one episode where he saw the goddamn universe as a digital fucking reality and that opened my eyes a little bit like hmm, maybe this is a little bit more than a hobby for me now at the eric cartman level there was one episode in south park this dude game till he fucking dropped. You cannot tell me this setup in this base does not speak true gaming addiction. This dude wanted to beat some like Discord mod ass loser at a game. He literally grinded 24 7. He pissed and shit in a bucket. It was pretty rough, but it was a funny episode nonetheless. But yeah. And what did we learn from this the duck? Mish. Well, it's an addiction once it starts to get in the way of your life. And you get mad over the smallest shit on the game. I know you enjoyed. Click it. Go follow my Instagram and peep the Spotify podcast. Link in description. Click the playlist. If you're a goat, click it right now.